Uh, Lisa Monderson, could you come up here, please? Thanks. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween to you. Happy Halloween to you too, Curtis. Happy Halloween, Curtis. Hope everybody had a good. <laughs> Say hi, Liam. Say happy Halloween, Liam. No, don't touch the keyboard. <laughs> Liam. Happy birthday, Stephanie. I don't know if you heard that, Steph. Happy birthday. 
We need to play her the Monster the Mass, so it's official. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> Dula Jarbo, are you here this morning? Dula? Oh, okay. Okay. Hello. Living the Life, session number three is in order. Living the life we want. General session number three. Good morning, Colorado. Happy Halloween. <laughs> um, do you have any spooky door prizes over there? Are you donating 100 bucks? Hundred bucks? What? No, I oh. <laughs> asked if he was donating a hundred. Um, so we, it's not spooky, but we do have a fifty-dollar gift card to Modern Market. Oh well, yeah. All right. Well, draw it. It's, it's not spooky. Let's see. She's drawing my name. She's drawing a name. Liam Kelly. Liam Kelly. Liam Kelly. Are you in the room, Liam, or out there in the Zoomosphere? Enjoy if you're in the Zoomosphere, jump up and down by raising your hand. Star nine. Option Y on the Mac. Alt Y on the desktop. He's here. We He's see. here. Great. Yay. Can you stand up, raise your hand, or something so we know where you are? Okay, we found him. All right. So. Uh, what we're going to do is have, as I say, can I have your, I know you're eating, but if you can eat just a little less loudly. Thank you. All right, so what we're going to do is have a working breakfast and uh, get some reports from our chapters and divisions. Um, and uh, what I would like, sound table, I don't know if we... I think we have an extra wireless mic, don't we? Somewhere? If we can get somebody that'd be willing to be a runner. Or a wheeler, for that matter. All, the key is mobility, right? <laughs> we need a moving platform. Um, and so what I'd like to do, and then Marianne, are you in the room? Uh, we're going to do a few reports, and then we'll do some auction. <coughs> and why Mo Moving mic. You, oh, you're the moving mic. Okay. So we're going to start with our biggest chapter, which, or at least our biggest geographic 
chapter because it covers the whole state. And that's our at-large chapter, Mountain and Plains. Renee, are you in the room? All right, moving platform, move to the mountains. And please All right, good give morning. Renee your attention. There you go, Renee, go ahead. Good morning, everyone, from the Mountains and Plains chapter. We, yay, <laughs> we um, are growing every day. Um, every chapter meeting we have, there's more people. And like Scott said, we do cover 104,000 plus square miles, bigger than anyone else in the whole affiliate. Um, we will, are you doing pledges now too? Scott, are we, are we doing pledges now too? Uh, no, that comes with the financial report later. Okay, that's fine. Yep. All right, there you go. Well, thank you, uh, Renee. Uh, let's see, where should we go next? Why don't we go to the Denver chapter? Do we have Dan Burke out there in the Zoomosphere? Erin no, Daly is here, and well, she has the report for the Denver chapter. Erin, well, if you're here, why don't you go ahead and give us a Denver report? Thank you for the Denver chapter. Uh, so we continue to meet virtually in 2021. Our meetings have consistently had 40, 50 or more on the Zoom calls. We have discussed in-person meetings throughout the year, but without a hybrid option, we have not wanted to exclude those who wouldn't be able to attend. In September, we did lose Doris Willoughby. Uh, Curtis and Doris have attended via Zoom throughout the pandemic when they were quarantined for much of that time. During our August meeting, oh, okay. we heard Doris's voice out. greeting us over Zoom and what a hand. gift that was. Still, we are tentatively planning a Christmas party to be in person on December 11th. In spring, we plan to bring our craft and health fair back to the CCB, and we are determined to work out a hybrid option so that we can be in person and still going like those folks who won't be able to come to the meeting. We can all see the value of this with this convention. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, thank you. That's a very informative and concise report. And um, speaking of Curtis, I don't know if we have him in the Zoom this morning. Um, do we know if Curtis is out there? If he is, we might have him say a few words. My understanding is uh, that Curtis is planning on moving to Arkansas. Uh, and so that's a loss for us, a gain for our Arkansas affiliate. Uh, but Curtis, are you out there this morning? Star six. I am, I am unmuted now. I, oh, I thought I think I hear something. I, that, I was muted centrally, and now I'm available. Now I okay. Am. Have I, can I have your attention, please, folks? Go ahead, Curtis. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for your good wishes about Doris, and your good wishes about Arkansas. I hope we I hope we enjoy it half as much as we have Colorado. It was still, I couldn't quite hear everything, Curtis, but it's so good to hear your voice. I don't know why your audio level is so low, um, but... We, because the volume control on the board is turned down. Yeah, uh, but we, we're going to miss you here, and, uh, but I know you'll bring good things to Arkansas. You and Doris have been such a big part of our affiliate. We want to thank you for your service. I know we were able to give you and Doris the Raymond W. McGeorge Award four years ago, and um, so now the Chongs join you in that proud tradition. So thanks for being out there, Curtis. Thank you. We're gonna finish at 11.45. Ah, so we've been in the mountains, we've been in Denver. Where will the bouncing chapter ball go? How about to Pueblo? Pueblo, are you out there, Sandy? Yeah, I'm here. It, well, Liam was standing right next to me with the microphone, so. There you go. It made it even easier. So now we started meeting in person in Pueblo, and um, there are people that I have been contacting on the, um, the white cane list, but they were more interested in um, coming to the meetings once we started meeting in person. 
So we've only done that for like two months now, but now that we've started meeting in person, we're going to um, call those people and see if they want to come, because if they do, then we'll probably end up with at least uh, four or five more people in the chapter, and that would be great, because we need to, more people in this chapter. We're definitely small, because we've already had two people, one person moved out of state, and um, another one is no longer with us. So we're, we're losing members, but we're hopefully gaining some as well. All right, here, Liam. Liam. Thank you, Sandy. And, you know, uh, I would tell you that uh, if I were president, um, we would do some chapter building down in Pueblo and uh, really work on that. But you know what? It's Actually, Jessica's it's problem. White, white oh, yeah. okay, but seriously, I think we should, uh, now that we're coming out of pandemic, we need to revamp a number of, uh, can I have your attention, please? Number, uh, revamp a number of our chapter building projects. We were doing a number of things before the pandemic. We were working very actively in the Grand Valley area, and we were getting a Fort Collins chapter going again, and all of that came to a screeching halt. But as we emerged from this pandemic, uh, we'll get back to a lot of that. So, all right, we're next going to go to JJ Aragon and Greeley. Are you out there, JJ? Ah, Kevin will come your way. The rolling microphone. Rolling, Good morning, rolling, everybody. Rolling. Whoa, okay, hello. Wow. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is JJ. I'm the president of Greeley. We are back in person, and we're very really excited about that. Um, so getting back on our feet after a pandemic, getting back in person. I think next month we'll actually be back at uh, Three Margaritas, which we're really excited about. Um, <laughs> I suppose the next thing on our agenda is the Christmas party, but the biggest thing on our agenda is convention in Greeley next year, guys. Yeah, we'll see you next year. Um, but we have some very special members in our chapter that are raring to go. We got JP, we got Rodney, we got Linda, our faithful, faithful treasure. Um, we still have two members, Melissa and Linda, from the very first meeting 21 years ago. So we've been around for 21 years, and we're not going anywhere, guys. So, that is my report. Thank you. Thank you, JJ. This next president is with us this morning in Zoom. She was with us in person almost, well, pretty much the whole rest of the convention, but this morning, Michelle Chacon should be out there in the Zoomosphere. Michelle? Michelle. Uh, well, as you try and find Michelle, I'm going to see if this next guy is here. Sorry. Oh, Can you Michelle. Hear me okay? <laughs> You're there, Michelle. Yes, I'm here. Sorry, my phone was not cooperating. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's so good to hear everybody out there. We have been meeting virtually for 2021. We were able to put together a fundraiser that we were able to do in person. It was a wine tasting event. We wined and dined with our Federation family and it was a lot of fun and we're hoping to get back to in person after the holidays. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you for all the great work you've done with the chapter, with project, with the uh, private school initiative and just everything else, and, and say, you know, say hi to that old guy of yours there, John Deaton. Good morning, John. All right. Um, next, this guy is always high, or at least a mile high, Mr. Cody Bear. Absolutely, absolutely. The honor Good morning Cody from the Bear. Mile High chapter where our dreams and aspirations for the blind of Denver are significantly higher than a mile high, but we go by the mile high chapter. Um, this year we've 
began, moved back to hybrid meetings. I think we were the first chapter to do hybrid. Um, among our other accomplishments this year were a successful Cinco de Mayo fundraiser and can, un, with the help and leadership of Gary Van Dorn, continued um, support of the 16th Street Mall redesign project and we've been very involved in that. Um, one other announcement I have this morning is I know many of you were waiting for our AirPod raffle drawing. So I'm going to pull the winner this morning here. And the winner is somebody that we all know and somebody that we all, um, definitely a very deserving winner, somebody that's a member of our chapter. It's Lisa Bonderson. <laughs> All right. Awesome. And that concludes my report for Mile High. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Cody Bear. <laughs> anyway, we're, now that we're a mile high, let's get a little wild. A little wild in the West. Mr. Paul Sandoval. We got. <laughs> Good morning, everybody from the Wild West. So Wild West is, you know, fighting through the pandemic and we are, uh, we've been meeting online, of course. We were one of the first chapters holding a combined cookout with Mile High, which I think we had uh, over 30 people in person. It was a really good time. Um, we are trying to find new ways to serve our community, um, you know, uh, and find new fundraising, find new members, continue to grow, and uh, I look forward to doing great things in the future, and especially this, this upcoming year getting back in person. This was a blast. I can't wait for our chapter meetings again. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Now, uh, Marianne, just to give you a heads up, I'm gonna call on you as the last chapter, and then we'll kick right into an auction item from there, it's just so you're ready. You can do it from there, yeah, I'm, I'm just sitting down myself. I mean. <laughs> um, let's see, where should we go? Oh, I know where I want to go. Uh, let's, we were in the west of the metro, now let's go east to Aurora. Do we have Dale here? Uh, moving microphone, if you can get over there to Dale. Just don't get in the way of that wheelchair. That's all I'm saying. Good morning uh, from Aurora. Uh, we've been, uh, again, like everybody else, we've been zooming around uh, on our meetings. Uh, thanks to uh, Curtis Chong, he uh, runs the Zoom, and that's good. Uh, just like he's been doing it here this weekend. Uh, the Aurora chapter <clears throat> had a proclamation for white cane awareness uh, signed by the governor or er, mayor. Uh, we had an active uh, Meet the Blind Month uh, at the libraries uh, and at the Heather Garden uh, uh, craft show, but uh, attendance were very low, both places. Anyway, uh, we welcome everybody uh, come December the 18th, which is a Saturday afternoon from 2 to 4. We will be having our Christmas uh, brunch at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at Heather Gardens. So anybody wants to come, you can give us a call. We'll get you directions. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. Okay, so next, Kevin, we're going to go over to Jeanette Fortin. Uh, and after that, Marianne, we're coming to you because you'll be the last uh, chapter. Uh, and then uh, after we 
do your report and an auction item. We'll start with our divisions. So over to you, Jeanette. Good morning, everybody. So the Colorado Springs chapter has been busy, busy, busy. We've been hybrid for almost a year, thanks to Joanne Franklin, our vice president. Um, we are looking forward to a very busy year. We've kind of started working with Arise Beyond Barriers, our title sponsor here, and uh, they're hosting our chapter meetings along with all kinds of activities. We've had a game day, we've had some uh, adaptive bicycle riding, we are having a, um, we usually go out to lunch for our holiday dinner, but this year we decided to get wild and do a chili cook-off, white elephant party, and Christmas decorating party. <laughs> this is on December the 11th, um, and we've, our chapter is slowly growing. We've got some new folks coming in. We still, as I say, are doing hybrid, so we have some that are still on line with us. And uh, we had, thanks to Kevin Worley, a white cane proclamation for White Cane Day. Um, and we're just uh, raising money. And again, if anybody, uh, yes. <laughs> if you've seen on Colorado Talk, we have a fundraiser currently until November 13th, Little Caesars Pizza. And uh, it's been shared on Facebook, Colorado Talk. And it will be delivered to your door, frozen with ice packs. You get two pizzas two crazy breads or whatever you choose. We're raising money for that. And, um, and we're just excited to be here this year. So glad to see everybody after two years. Thank you. All right, Jeanette, thank you so much. Now, as uh, forewarned and so forth, here is Mary Amelia Ray. Good morning, everybody. The Boulder Chapter Report. Uh, we just did an accessible day to, for, to, for several of our, a bunch of our chapter members, and we're building a relationship with BDT Stage. We did an accessible uh, show with audio description, hands-on tour for Avenue Q. And we are looking into doing the same kind of things for shows like White Christmas, and some others which will be on the stage, props, costumes, audio description over Zoom, uh, things of that nature. We're also starting to have some major conversations, uh, thanks to the work of Jordan Castor, about audible traffic signals and appropriate uh, placements, which I'm really glad we have a resolution on this year so that we can uh, but we are working with the city on making sure that Jordan can get to her job independently and that hopefully we will have some even more accessible transit in Boulder. So that's another initiative we're on. Uh, right now, we are still not meeting in person because the library where we do typically meet is not still open to the public in the meeting spaces. So we are still meeting on Zoom plan to be at least for a little while longer. And um, that is what I know for a Boulder report for now. And I need to ask a question because I got another auction item given to me, but I don't know who to credit it with. <laughs> and it was um, $50 from Yoga Body and Oh, it is part of Sports and Rec. Okay, thank you. We will make sure that whoever got the Sports and Rec package does actually get that then. Because um, we have these two things, I would, but they weren't originally listed in the Sports and Rec. So that package was actually more valuable. So whoever got it got even more. Bonus. I like bonuses. All right. Then we are going to do a quick mystery auction piece. And since I'm sitting down here, I hope you all will trust me with the magic number. But it is number 23, the perfectly posh uh, set. It's a melon plumeria set with lotion and a beauty bar. It's all natural ingredients. It's been living in my purse for like a day, so now my purse smells like plumeria. <laughs> so. It, it's, it's a good sign, um, and it's, it's a beautiful little box set uh, donated by Mountains and Plains. And it's, 
it's a $30 value, I would say, from, based on the ingredients. And I'd like to start it at 10. 25, who said the 25? Penn Street is getting it. Because that was the mystery number. <laughs> Yay. Well, uh, and how many total uh, additional oxygen items do you have, Marianne? Nope. Marianne. Huh. Yes, sir. How many total more? How many additional auction items? Do you Actually, have? since one of them went away and we didn't use, be, it was, it was these are a separate item. Okay, it's a second package. So I have two, unless Greeley still wants me to auction the, the extra Broncos package that they talked to me about as well. I'm sorry, y'all need to say something a little louder than that? Okay, Marty, I'll do it, just because you said so. All so right. we have three. All right, well, well, we'll sprinkle them in and out uh, Perfect. throughout the morning. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Marianne, thank you very much. Now, uh, let's start going to our chapter, I mean our divisions. Um, and I hope she's out there in the Zoomosphere. Cynthia Coffin and the students. Hello, Scott. Um, hey, there we, you are. <laughs> we did really well this year. We did a um, football survival pool and raised money for that. And we actually have a new board this year. We have our vice president's Daya. Our um, treasurer is Ellie. And our secretary is Carlos Gladder. And hopefully we can get some more students involved this year. <laughs> And we're going to try to have a Christmas party at Christmas time. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. <laughs> I hope you're feeling better, Cynthia. You I am. Better? I'm doing a lot. I'm doing a lot better. <laughs> good, good. Well, uh, hang in there. I wish you were here. But next year, you'll be with us. I know yeah, you will. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be there next year. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, students. Next, we're going to go to the Parents of Blind Children. Amira Lucas, are you out there, Amira? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you say she's there or not there? Oh, Amira, are you out there, Amira? <laughs> she, she probably had the meeting on mute and is now running across the house to... So meanwhile, well, we're looking for a mirror. We're going to go to Maureen Neatfeld and the blind parents. Good morning, everybody. Can I hear from all of our blind parents? Woo! The blind parents have been so excited this year. We have been able to have um, on Zoom conversations about topics, you know, from all over to how do we deal with our kids when they start dating and how do we work with our kids if they're in the criminal justice system, all kinds of topics that are relevant to parents. And we have had fantastic parents from around the country facilitating these conversations. We just had Melissa Rigobono this week facilitating a great conversation. We've had the Chongs. We've had um, Amy and Shane Burrish from Nebraska. Um, and lots, lots others. Thank you to all of our fantastic parents. We also had our first in-person event, and we collaborated with the Parents of Blind Children. And we were able to have the South Metro Fire Station come out, and all our kids got to check out a fire truck. It was so much fun. They got to steer it and feel everything, and we also had a snow cone truck. We also are planning to collaborate with the Denver chapter and Parents of Blind Children for a Christmas party, December 11th. So we know we'll have lots of fun there. And we wanna welcome our newest board member, Joe Elizabeth Pinto. Thank you, Joe. And also a very special thanks to Brittany Savage and Kevin Kovacs. They have facilitated our work with the DCPA and selling our Hamilton tickets. And we've been very successful in that fundraiser. 
and Brittany and Kevin have worked so hard to make this happen. So thank you, Mr. President, that's my report. Well, thank you, Madam President. Uh, that excellent report, uh, you, the blind parents, and I'm a very proud member of that division, are on the move. Now, let's see if parents of blind children are back. Is Amira, are you there? Hello. Good morning, everyone. There you are. Good morning, Amira. Good morning. Sorry. Right when I needed it to work, it doesn't. Um, so, yeah, we've... Uh, Amira, uh, we lost you. Oh, uh, that's definitely a, a broadband oh, issue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Amira, okay. your connection. Can you hear me now? Isn't... Ah, there you go. All right. So I'll be quick, just since the connection's not great. But yeah, so we're going to continue moving with in person stuff. We have our annual meeting in January with uh, elections and nominations. And I think the most exciting part for our division is that we have on a heat working at the center again for, um, as a youth coordinator. And she has done amazing already helping uh, engage parents. So that is my report. Well, thank you, Amira. And uh, Madam School Board member, I should say, <laughs> um, as you begin those duties, we wish you luck. I, when is it you're getting sworn in? December, December 1st. All right, we're going to try and get some folks to your swearing in. We want, we want to get, see you get sworn in. All, that kind of stuff. All right, moving right along. We got it. And this is perfect to say moving right along because we're going to Sports and Rec. Jody Whithaus. Oh, they don't see her in here. Hmm. Jody, are you out there on the Zoomosphere? Jody. Did it, did it, did it, did it, Jody. It, did, did. Jody, we'll give you a few more seconds to unmute and pipe up. Uh, Pippi Adams, are you in the room? Pippi, Pippi, Pippi. Pippi, Pippi, Pippi. Did, 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 did. No, Pippi? All right. We're... What's that? Oh, she's up there in child care. I, I want to, well, when you see Pippi, thank her for that. She coordinated and ran our child care this weekend, among I'm all here, other Scott. Oh, Pippi! Hello, hello. Okay. Pippi? Yes, can you hear me okay? There you go, there you go. Good morning, everyone. Um, on behalf of the blind merchants. Yes, that's what I'm part of. I'm going to step away from the kids for a few minutes. Um, so this year we have been, are we doing the money pledge right now too, Scott, or just kind of, is that something separate? Okay. Uh, that's later. Yes. That's later. Okay. Okay. So we have been working hard with uh, Scott's definite help to kind of bring our um, business enterprise program back to something respectable and something that we can love and respect and, and just be great. And we will get there um, with the, the help of our National Federation of the Blind of Colorado and um, with our operators, we, we will get back to a very strong and healthy program. And um, also we, along with that, as the blind merchants, we are um, expanding it to more than just, just the business enterprise program. We are also including other, you know, blind merchants encompasses all blind entrepreneurs in Colorado. So we've had at our meeting this year, we had, um, you know, Brit Brittany Savage was there and she is a wonderful blind entrepreneur. And we had, I don't want to leave people out. So I'm just going to name a few. So if I left you out, it's not on purpose. Um, we had um, Paul Sandoval there who we know owns his own tech training um, business. And we also had other people talk about the different things that they do, a real estate um, agent. And Jessica also talked about what she's doing around the country with children, like blind children. So different entrepreneurs out there outside of the uh, business enterprise program. So we want to um, really encompass all of our blind entrepreneurs into our blind merchants along with strengthening our business enterprise program. So thank you very much, Scott, for letting me speak this morning. Well, thank you, Pippi, and thank you for doing the child care and all the other work 
We appreciate it. Okay, uh, do we have Jody now? Jody. Do, 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 do. Still no Jody. All right, Mr. next. Mr. President, can oh. I make a quick announcement? This is Maureen. For no, no, you can't. Thank you, sir. No, no, so <laughs> for all of our CCB students, make sure you get your bags right after session adjourns. Be downstairs in the lobby with your things to be picked up and ready to go. Our vehicles will be leaving, uh, will be arriving at 1230. So please be ready to go. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. I wonder if Julie's on this morning. Um, Julie uh, decided to stay back. Dan is not feeling well. Uh, and uh, anyway, Julie, are you out there by any chance? Julie, uh, we know you're here. If you're here, you can say something if you like, like, you know. Good. Oh, there you are. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Julie. So happy to be here on the Zoomosphere with all of our Colorado friends. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, everybody. And thank you, Maureen, for putting all the pieces together at the hotel. And take care of that, Dan. Uh, I will take care of this, Dan. All right. Good morning, Dan. <laughs> all right. Uh, ne next, we're going to go to Dula Jarbo. If you can roll over there, Kevin. Dula! Kevin's coming. Do, 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 do. Can you hear me? Oh, there you go. No, I'm not used to being that loud. <laughs> uh, so we have been meeting uh, once a month over Zoom, and I'd like to thank Marianne Miliorelli for uh, hosting those meetings for us. Um, and we've had some great conversations around deafblind issues. Um, we've been able to have people from all over the country join us. Uh, it's wonderful. And um, I'd really like to have some assistance with trying to find more deafblind people. Um, I think it's a challenging population to reach out to because of the fact that deafblind people tend to be more isolated. Um, so I I think if we could sit down and try to figure out some good ways to, to try to find more people to join us and be involved, that would be great. Um, we also had Roberto Cabrera here uh, as an exhibitor and uh, participating in our annual seminar yesterday, and he is the uh, outreach coordinator for the Colorado Commission for the Deaf, Hard of Hearing, and Deafblind. <clears throat> and so, um, it was great to have him. He has a lot of really good information to share. And that's what I have. Thank you. Thank you, Jula, for everything that you do. And now we know, of course, that you're an official uh, division of our affiliate. So um, let's move on to, I don't know if we have Diane this morning uh, on the Zoomosphere. Diane McGeorge, are you out there? Do, 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 do. do you see her there, uh, Zoom people? Okay, well, all right, that's fine. Do we have any other uh, representatives from the seniors with us this morning? Duncan. Hey, Duncan. Duncan, are you out there? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm happy to give the report for Diane. So in the senior division, uh, we were assisting the national senior division to put on the senior retreat that we do every year, the annual senior retreat. This was the second year that it was virtual. And so uh, we assisted with the uh, organizing of it and also um, teaching some of the sessions. So that was great. We had over 40 people from all over the country. So it was great to be involved with that national uh, movement. Uh, we were able to assist financially one person to attend the senior retreat from Colorado. We had others from Colorado who 
who attended that retreat. We were also able to assist um, a person financially to come to this state convention. So we continually are um, promoting people to be involved with the National Federation of the Blind, both on a national and state and local level. And I think that's my report. Diane probably would have said a bunch of other things, but. <laughs> That's just fine. Thank you Thank so you. much, Duncan. And glad that you've been with us all weekend in the Zoomosphere. Yeah. All right, last but not least, uh, this gentleman has been going to the dogs for several years. Uh, in fact, it was at this convention in 2016 that he left, and uh, at the end of convention that very same day, met his guide, uh, the lovely and talented Onyx. Uh, but let's hear from, uh, you know, the less attractive member of that pair. Let's, let's hear from the president. <laughs> <laughs> the president of our guide dog division, Mr. Kevin Worley. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, I, I often get, comp the people will, uh, especially uh, our women, uh, as I travel around, they, and they'll say, oh, you're just, you're so sweet. Or you're, I'm like, well, thank you. Well, of course, they're not talking about me at all. Uh, we've done a great job this year. I'm so proud of our board of directors who have engaged over Zoom, like everyone, but we've also been out uh, raising some dollars. Thank you, Marianne and Paul and our M committee. You know who you are, the M committee for putting together, there they are for putting together our, uh, our scavenger hunt. And that was a nice event and we're gonna do it again next year, I do believe. People enjoyed that and we'll expand it, I think, and get more people, young people uh, involved in that. Uh, we continued to work on the ride share discrimination issues big time in Colorado. In fact, we, uh, many of you may not know, we had an incident at this convention. Three of our members were turned down for Uber rides on Friday night. Uh, in fact, the police were called uh, and our folks have filed the report, uh, not only with the police, but with our rideshare reporting system through the National Federation of the Blind. And so, yeah, Paul, thank you, uh, James Brown. Uh, who else was engaged in it? Jimmy Bain and one of our center students, Ellie, right? Amanda. Amanda, I'm getting older all the time. All right, so thanks. So we're, I think we're really building. And by the way, I noticed there are a lot of guide dog handlers and dogs at this convention. Yeah, I, I would suggest, at least suggest, that we have more guide dogs at this convention than ever in our history. I was telling someone the other day that 15 years ago, uh, a little over a decade ago, you probably would find three guide dogs. One from Diane and a couple other folks. Now we probably have 20 here. Uh, which is awesome. But what that means is some of you guide dog handlers haven't been active in the Colorado Association of Guide Dog Users. And remember that collective uh, action is what makes it possible for us to do the things we do in the Federation and makes it possible for the build the Federation and fight any discriminatory action. We continue to support our national effort to work on some of these crazy airline challenges where you have to do the attestation. Every airline is different. Um, I'm flying in two weeks. Frankly, I'm, I'm a little nervous about it. I don't know what the hell to do. But at any rate, we'll get it done. Um, there was one other thing I think I wanted to report. No, maybe not. Okay, I think that's all, Scott. Forward, always forward. Thank you, Mr. Worley. Uh, and we appreciate all of our chapters and divisions. The Federation is alive and well here in Colorado, so let's hear it for all of our chapters and divisions! Yay! All right. Door prize? Yeah. We did Colorado Springs. Jeanette gave a report. I don't know where you were. Jeanette did a really nice job. Sounding, you know, lovely and vibrant as usual. I, I just don't know where you were. You want to add an item? Uh, he's coming. He's rolling. Now, next, after that, we're going to have a door prize. So get ready, door prize, people. And then we're going to go to the second half of My Blindness, Myself, and Judy. And hopefully we've got the bugs all ironed out this morning. 
uh, but let's get ready for that. Uh, so, Kevin, with your additional item. Hey, check, check. Thank you. It was awesome. Like one, two, uh, one, the, two. One point I wanted to make about the uh, proclamation uh, that we got from the city council. Number one, we have uh, Yolanda Avila, who comes to these conventions quite often, um, on our city, a blind federation member on our city council. And what Yolanda and I said was, we're going to get a resolution from city council, but we're not going to just do lip service, where they can get up there and say, whereas blind people are great, integrate them into society, yabba yabba. Well, I got on the mic and I said, look, you know, platitudes are great and we appreciate it. We truly appreciate the recognition. However, the electric scooter program in our city, uh, we've got to deal with that. There are these new program and the scooters are all over downtown. They don't make any noise. Uh, sometimes Onyx and I have trouble getting between a wall and a post and two scooters that are just left there. Uh, we also dealt with some other issues. We have five minutes to do a resolution uh, in front proclamation in front of these bodies. I suggest that we don't just say thank you. I say thank you, but what have you done for us lately? Amen. Yeah, we had a resolution on the national level about scooters, and so we already have policy, and uh, we can make some more policy here in Colorado if we need to. So. Thank you, Kevin. Um, that also reminds me, you, you brought up Yolanda. Penn Street, one of our members, uh, is running for city council. Uh, in Loveland, right? It's Loveland, yeah. At Ward 3. So good luck to you, Penn. As you know, the NFP of Colorado can't be a political organization, but if you want to approach Penn you know, individually and talk politics, well, go right ahead. It's free country. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know if we have a door prize or not, but... We always have a door prize. Oh, well, then what is it? Well, we have, in honor of our last uh, speaker there, we have some biodegradable dog waste bags, so your dogs can be bougie, and these are very nice. They're not plastic. It's fantastic. Ooh, that rhymed. Uh, <laughs> And I also have some Shea hand soap from Mary Kay Satin Hands. Ooh, baby. And the winner is... Libby Molnar. Libby! Libby, Libby, Libby! On the label, label, label. Um, are where, you here? Libby, are you here? No, she was here earlier this weekend. Oh, uh, okay. So uh, is she on Zoom by any chance? <laughs> they want some money, Aaron. Well, I, I would right. want a million dollars, but I, I mean, I have. <laughs> so draw again there, Aaron. Kimberly Crouch Wong. Hey, Kimberly. I know you've been around. Are you in the room? Yay, Kimberly. All right. <laughs> All right, so uh, next, let's, and I hope it works this time, uh, I'd like to bring on uh, Judy Maris Dixon uh, to talk to us about her blindness and herself. As I said yesterday, uh, Judy is a world-renowned uh, and incredibly talented mediator, has built an, a very successful build, uh, business, and uh, she's just a, a terrific, wonderful person. Are you with us, Judy? Good morning. Can you hey, hear me? We got you. Ah. We hear you. <laughs> to relieve. Well, thank you all, and thanks for your patience. And uh, I really am so glad this mic is working because I am teaching a class over the next two weeks. So you can imagine my anxiety. I'm starting my video for you that care about that. There we go. Um, that. You can imagine my anxiety about this not working, but we're going to just let that go for now. We're going to focus on what matters most. So Scott asked me, and Scott, thank you for that introduction. That was just, that was very kind. Scott asked me to talk about my life, how it's been shaped by NFB. And I don't know how much time I have, but I like to be brief. So that's my goal. I was born blind. Um, I was born to sighted parents. They were not well-educated and not well-informed about blindness. 
Um, my mother learned anything and everything that she could. She's no longer with us, but I will proudly say I'll nominate her as the very best mother in all the world ever. So I was, my life was certainly shaped uh, by her willingness to give her kindness. My life was also shaped at an early age by another person that you all know well, who I hope is on the line with us somehow. And that's Diane, Diane McGeorge, who she says that she met me when I was a baby. Um, I remember my first memory of her is when I was three. And she came into my room and sat down at my tiny little table. And my mother instructed me to read to her in Braille. And I did. Uh, my mother was strict and required us to read every day for a number of minutes or hours, depending on our attitude. And uh, so she has shaped my life for so many years, not just with skill, but with wisdom and love and caring, and I will always appreciate that. I am a product of public school. My mother insisted upon that. And I was integrated into regular classrooms for all of my uh, primary and secondary education with some, what do you call them? Itinerant teachers supporting me. Some of my itinerant teachers were fantastic. I will remember them fondly always. A couple of them were not. I don't take any time to remember them. Um, I will tell you that in high school, I had the same problem that a number of you have expressed over the weekend about attempting to hide my blindness. Imagine that, I'm totally blind. Uh, and I'm gonna hide it and fake it and so that I can convince my sighted peers that I can see. Well, well, so, I did not want to learn to use a cane. And uh, my mother really couldn't change my attitude too much. I had a wonderful O&M teacher, just the best, but I still was hesitant. So I was ready to go off on a lesson from school. I went to South High School and at that time, we had 3,400 students. They have policies against that today. Uh, you can imagine the passing periods. I didn't have to worry too much about getting around because you sort of went with the throng uh, or you were pushed. So I didn't want to learn to use a cane. And a friend of mine said to me, I don't know what your problem is, but why don't you give it to me? I'll do it. And I said, why? And she said, oh, Judy, he's so good looking. Uh, at that point, I changed my attitude a little bit just a little bit, um, but I owe to my o &M teacher from high school so much for his undaunting belief in teaching me to do all of it. Um, I joined NFB in 1977. That's been a while. And I wasn't a member, but more than maybe 30 days when I was asked if I would go to a convention in New Orleans. Now, I was a college student at the time at CU, and I had taken one airline flight in my life. Um, my family was a very low income family. We did not use airlines to travel. I got to fly once when I was 14 to see my best friend in Baltimore, and I went by myself. Uh, I don't know how my mother worked it, but she worked out a way to walk with me right to the door of the plane uh, before everyone else got on. I was very well attended to. Uh, my mother was very brave. I heard later that she cried all the way home, but she would deny that to this day. Anyway, other than that, I'd never traveled. So on the day that I was supposed to go to the airport, I was concerned. I didn't really know how to do that. Um, I come from a Latino background and in our family, pride defines us. So I decided to call Diane and Ray and see if they wanted somebody to go to the airport with them. And of course, uh, they invited me to come to their house first. 
And that started us off on a wonderful convention, my first convention, and it was terrific. In my 20s, I read everything that Dr. Jernigan published, in part because I was and still am so impressed by his wisdom and his intelligence and his ability to write beautifully. Uh, I reread some of his speeches recently for another presentation that I did. And all these years later, I'm just as impressed with his wisdom and his intelligence. And the last thing I want to say about my early, how NFB shaped my life early on has to do with the marches. Some of you will remember some of this uh, way back when, when NAC was still around and the workshops were still around and our marches were still around. I learned a lot about advocacy. I learned a lot about courage and I learned a lot about discipline going through those marches. I remember specifically a march we had in Minneapolis in the dead of winter because NAC uh, would have their annual meetings in places that they thought it would be very hard for us to protest. Uh, and it was definitely below zero. It was snowing. It was cold. We had a huge crowd. We were told though, that we needed to make a quick decision because the police were on their way to arrest us. And so anyone who wanted to opt out should do it, do it quickly, get back on the buses, et cetera. And I remember how impressed I was at such a young age. I don't think, at least the reports, the debrief we got later, was that no one opted out, nor did we get arrested, kind of anticlimactic. So two or three things I wanna say about the NFB and about being blind from the years that I have been active for a number of years, uh, when I was in the private sector in a large international mediation firm, I was not very active. Uh, my life was working 80 hours a week. I lived on planes. Uh, I will never regret it, and I will never do it again. But I had very little time or energy for hardly anything else. Now, I love what I do. I believe in what I do. Uh, I think that good mediators are better mediators if we also know how to advocate, how to protest, if we also know about litigation so that we can really figure out which is the best option when, right? As I think back on what it takes for us to make a mark on society and change society, I have the privilege, because of my age, to look back on how the Federation has changed. We had to focus so much in years um, in our history on discrimination having to do with employment. We still do. You know, there are so many jobs open out there right now. We ought to be able to get any job we want. They're all open. And yet it's still there. And I hope that the new CEO that we heard about yesterday will really focus on finding employment in the private and public sector from at all levels for people with all skills who are blind because the opportunities for employment are out there like they've never been before for the rest of the world and they ought to be out there for us. Easy said, hard to do. Um, before I went into the field of mediation, uh, I briefly ran an independent living center in Boulder. And I am proud to say that our primary focus was on employment. It was not about writing resumes. It was about getting the actual job. 
And our celebrations were primarily, not exclusively, but primarily when people landed a job. Because I think for our, our um, view of ourselves, our view of our community, our sense of success, our sense of independence, there are a number of things that work, right? Friendships, love, support, mentoring, and a job so that we can pay our way, say what we want, and do what we want. That's what my mother taught me. She taught me to pay my way. She said, do good. She said, give back. And she said, be happy and healthy. And I think I'm living up to those things. I also want to make another point. Um, I can certainly talk about the people in my life that have attempted to hold me back. Like the teacher I had in elementary school that sent me to the swings when everyone else was doing fun things in my class and I could hear them all laughing and cheering while I was on the swings alone. Somehow my mother found out about that too. And she called him, the PE teacher, and told him that I had to be with everyone else in class regardless of what they were doing. And the next day, I will always remember this, even though I was a child, I could um, denote his attitude when he said, Judy, your mother called yesterday and your mother said that you have to be part of the circle when we play uh, ball. And I said, oh, God. All right. That was wonderful. That, that was great. Uh, did I get the ball? Well, no. But was I with my friends yelling? Yes. So fast forward, I appreciate the people around me that have supported me and allowed me to do the things that I've wanted to do throughout my whole life. Some are blind, some are not. I first uh, applied to a uh, county council, I, I won't say which one, about two years ago, I got on. And about six months later, I said to a very close friend of mine, we've been good friends for 38 years. She's not blind. I said, um, Andrea, I'm probably going to resign from the council in a couple of months because I don't feel welcome. Um, I, I, I don't feel like people want to say much to me. They kind of walk around me. It's kind of awkward. I don't like this. So I think I'll just quit. And she said, oh, no, you won't do that. You will find a way in. You will get to know all of them. It'll all work out. And then you'll chair it. And I thought, so much for empathy. Thank you very much. I should talk to a blind friend about this. She was right. And I bring that up because I think it's important for us to line up our blind support, right? And our sighted support, because we can learn so much from both of them. And I had to let her in. And when I did, and she said what she said, I knew she was right. So as I think about this organization going forward, in so many ways, there's been so much progress because of the brilliant leadership and the brilliant commitment all over this country and way beyond. And there's so much more to do. I'm a tech geek. I'm not going to go back to yesterday. Um, that's just humiliating. That's not humbling. It's humiliating. Uh, I love tech. I like all the gadgets. And I'm so happy that we're moving towards more and more uh, accessibility in that arena. That's really important. And of course, in my view, what is more important is more and more access to the opportunity for jobs to be recognized for us being full uh, functioning people with a whole lot to give, a whole lot to offer that can make our communities more successful. And with everything I have, I will do everything I can 
to participate in that. And I thank you all very much for fitting me in on a Sunday morning. Well, thank you. Thank you, Judy. And uh, I'm so glad that uh, your circumstances have changed to some degree that you can be more involved again in the NFB because you bring a great deal. And, uh, you know, I, uh, it's uh, always makes me proud because at least once a year, Judy, I see through the Colorado Bar Association a, uh, a full week-long mediation course that you run uh, and that you're known as the expert in the legal community uh, regarding mediations. Uh, and um, it just makes me so proud because that's one of our members who's at the top of her field doing what she can to spread a positive message about blindness. She is living the life she wants. Thank you so much, Judy. Thank you. Thank you. And um, let's do a door prize, I think. I door was hoping prize. you would tell me that. So let's give away um, a goodie bag full of stuff. It's nice and warm and cozy. We got a hat and scarf and mint bliss socks and and uh, some other little goodies in here. And how about Nicholas Becerra or my school? Ah, Nicholas. Uh, are either Karina or uh, Martin on this morning? Are they? Martin, Martin's there? Martin, I think, uh, I'm sure you want to claim the door prize on behalf of your son. Martin? All right. You're a winner. Yay! All right. Well, I mean, Nicholas is a winner, actually. <laughs> All right. Next up, uh, we're going to hear from the president of the National Organization of Parents of Blind Children. Uh, this, of course, is Carlton Walker. Uh, Carlton has been with us all weekend and just been such a big part and uh, helped us so much in the convention. Yesterday, when we had a sort of a kerfuffle over one of the breakout sessions uh, and the presenter wasn't here because the presenter thought it was going to be in the afternoon, not the morning, Carlton jumped right in and, and did the seminar, so, and she was invaluable to our parents uh, and teachers' seminar yesterday. Uh, she's been building the National Federation of the Blind through our parents' division. Uh, let's give a very warm Colorado welcome to Carlton Walker. Thank you. Golly. Okay, there we go. Got it in there. Um, good morning. And I thank the National Federation of the Blind of Colorado and your president, Scott Labar, still president, yeah, for, <laughs> for inviting me to speak today. First, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Carlton Ann Cook Walker, big mouthful I know, and I am the mother of a blind 20-year-old, Anna Catherine. I have the honor of serving as president of, and this is an even longer name, the National Organization of Parents of Blind Children, NOPBC, a proud division of the National Federation of the Blind. I'm also certified as a teacher of students with blindness and low vision, and I am an attorney with my own solo law practice and an advocacy for firm, Blindness Education and Advocacy Resources, BEAR. As you might guess, the, that name came from the fact that I am a mama bear. As NOPBC president, I'm eager to share with you the importance of bringing young blind children and their families into our federation as early as we can. Each blind child is different, and every family is different. Nevertheless, I firmly believe that blind children are best served when they and their parents find and become part of the National Federation of the Blind through their local chapter, state affiliate, and national divisions, including the National Organization of Parents of Blind Children. Some families find the, F 
Federation early on. And as we've been hearing all weekend, some blind children must wait till they are adults to find their Federation's family. Here's our family story. My blind child was not born blind and does not have a condition that le led to blindness. In fact, we didn't even understand that poor vision impacted Anna Catherine for several years. Once we did, we reached out for help, but for months, we found none. Eye care professionals at the children's hospitals we went to gave us lots of medical jargon, but they were ill-equipped to provide real-life information. Anna Catherine was receiving early intervention services and preschool services due to other physical disabilities, but no one seemed to think about <clears throat> how Anna's poor vision and how it, uh, about her Anna's poor vision and how its impact would keep growing as the years went on. <clears throat> Even the Association for the Blind in our South Central Pennsylvania region rejected us. They told us they didn't serve anyone under 50. We were lost. What could we do? The person at that Association for the Blind did give us one lead, our state blindness agency, the Bureau of Blindness and Visual Services. When I contacted them, they indicated that they don't usually offer services until age 14. But this particular regional office was piloting a children's program, so we made an appointment to meet. The social workers who visited with us were fabulous, and they promised to come to future IEP meetings. And they told us about an organization in Baltimore that was holding a special conference in just a few weeks. It was a conference focused on early childhood, and it was being put on by some group called the National Federation of the Blind. We called and made plans to attend this conference with Anna Catherine. Anna Cat came. We were both excited and scared. Would we really get useful information? After all, Anna Catherine had some residual vision. How much of what we would learn would apply to Anna Catherine? And on a personal level, I was intimidated. I had never known a blind person before. I didn't know how to act or what to expect. Nevertheless, we forged ahead. We arrived at a stunning building in Baltimore on a spring Thursday evening. We were hopeful and apprehensive. Little did we know how that one weekend would change our lives. The conference itself was great, but we got so much more that weekend. When we arrived, we were confident that Anna Catherine's future success would be dependent on the amount of vision Anna could use. However, in one weekend, we learned that we were wrong. The Beginnings and Blueprints Conference allowed us to spend time with and get to know successful blind adults who were running the conference, presenting sessions, and taking the time to talk with us and develop personal relationships. In three short days, the word blind lost its mystery, and our hearts and minds opened to new possibilities. When we left Baltimore, a seed had been planted. We began to think, huh, maybe Anna Catherine's future will depend on skills, not on vision. <laughs> this was a sea change for us. So it took some time for that seed to germinate. Each time we had the opportunity to connect with the amazing NFB members, we knew we learned more and the seed grew. As we became members of our Federation family, our roots grew deeper and that small seed grew into a powerful and strong tree. Over the years, we attended national conventions, affiliate conventions, events at the National Ball Center in Baltimore, and some chapter meetings in our affiliate and others. We attended these events for Anna Catherine, but we were enriched as well. Even though we could only attend a few events each year, our participation in these activities taught us the importance of blindness skills and empowered us to support Anna Catherine every day, every week, 
and every month of the year. But we still missed out on a very important part of what the Federation has to offer. Sadly, we had been Federationist for more than a decade before we were able to attend a local chapter meeting. This is sad because as a child and teen, Anna Catherine always looked forward to being around other blind people. And my husband and I would have enjoyed being able to hang out with our blind adult friends more regularly. Alas, living in rural areas prevented us from enjoying this aspect of our Federation family. However, with the great advances in distance technology we have today, even those geographical obstacles we face can be overcome. Many families in the NOPBC have traveled a similar journey in the Federation. Far, far too few of our blind children have local chapters in which they and their parents are involved. There are many reasons for that, this, and here are a few. Misunderstanding by what we mean by the, of what we mean by the, with the word blind. Does it apply to my child? When I um, speak to parents, I usually start out with, please understand that blind for us is a big tent wor word. We are a big tent corporation and we want to be a bigger family. Families also have a lack of experience with any kind of uncorrectable vision loss. Leads to a fear of the unknown and trepidation about meeting blind adults. And frankly, the low instance nature of blindness and low vision is a major impact. It leads to isolation and it leads to reliance on, in quotations, professionals. Often these professionals focus on maximizing vision and they often have low expectations and they transmit these to families every day, every week, and every month. Of course, we cannot change these factors overnight, but by understanding them, we can take action to welcome our blind children and their families into our federation and build the kind of meaningful relationships our blind children need throughout their lives. Here are a few ways we can make the connections our blind children and their families need. First, Practice patience. That's a hard one for me, <laughs> but it's a really important one. Remember, those medical and educational professionals have had years to beat down expectations. It will take time and love to overcome those years of negative messages. Also recognize and accept when parents are really focused on the diagnosis. In some cases, there are important medical issues involved in a diagnosis. But even if it's not medical, look at the, the focus on diagnosis is actually a really good first step toward embracing the child for who he or she is. Embrace that parental desire for diagnosis. Uh, because frankly, it's a really human thing I live in Pennsylvania, but grew up in North Carolina, and I can't tell you how excited I get when I see an NC State t-shirt or bumper sticker up in Pennsylvania. And I'm always looking for my left-handed friends. It's just natural to have an affinity for people who you have something in common with. So do consider connecting families if they're really diagnosis focused with blind adults with a similar diagnosis. And if they're not in your chapter or your affiliate, Find someone. Um, and as relationships with those federations grow, parents will start to understand that skills and not vision are what empower the child. And most of all, exhibit unconditional acceptance of individual choice. Acceptance does not equal advocacy for that choice. He, if if the parent's heading down a road you don't think it's a great road, be there and keep gently sharing information you think will be helpful. Live your life as the role model you want to be. 
and recognize that we might not have all the relevant information, and frankly, the family might not either. But love is the strongest force in the world. When we keep our hearts and minds open, we encourage families to keep theirs open as well. Don't write anyone off. Be ready to be there. Just be there. This, of course, is how relationships grow strong. And please know the NOPBC, with the support of the Colorado affiliate and the national office, stands ready to support you every step of the way. We welcome partnerships with affiliates and local chapters. Not only is this what we do in the Federation, it allows us to provide parents 360 degree support and deepens their ties to the Federation through supporting parent-specific concerns, regional and local resources, and the authentic relationships that are needed in every facet of the children's lives. Together, we can help parents learn the truth about blindness, and we can empower them to seek and obtain the education and the opportunities our children, not their children, our children, need to grow into the confident adults they have the right to be. As an initial matter, please note that NOPBC has a program called PAT, Parent Affiliate Teamwork. Well, you know, as an attorney and an educator, I have to go with the acronym, sorry. Um, through this program, we seek to serve as a bridge between parents and their affiliates and local chapters. We plan to assign a board member to each affiliate to serve as a resource for the affiliate, chapters, and parents. Of course, all our board members are always available for support as needed, but we believe that having one go-to person is important. Additionally, NOPBC has many child-specific resources to attract parents in the first place. We have a Facebook public page, but our private group really is a great place for parents to communicate, and we welcome and encourage as many blind adults to join as well. We have our NOPBC website, which includes fabulous resources, our webinar and NOPBC conference recordings, as they're on a YouTube channel as well. And of course, the National Center offers many programs. I, my time's getting short, so I'm gonna run through. Future Reflections, NFE website, literature, Washington Seminar, Early Childhood Initiative, including Santa, Winter Letters starting November 9th, free white canes, free braille books, free braille writing tools, braille and non-visual instruction resources, NFE Bell Academy, distance learning resources, braille readers, leaders, reading contest starting soon, STEM resources, and NFB Newsline can never um, avoid that. Really quick commercial break. NOPBC has a special exclusive relationship with Freedom Scientific. NOPBC members, for $15, can get a free annual license for JAWS, Fusion, or Zoom text. So well, we can talk about that when I have more time. But please know this. An African proverb, proverb tells us it takes a village to raise a child. This proverb recognizes that children need supports and relationships from, with individuals from varied backgrounds in order to become the individuals they have a right to be. For blind children, finding the village can be difficult. Some families, like mine, didn't even know what kind of village we needed. That's why we, as Federationists, must reach out as often as needed to invite, engage, and envelop blind children and their families into our village, our Federation family. By involving families in the affiliate and chapter level, we can help parents put these tools into action, empowering them to support their children in learning braille, cane travel, accessible technology, and other vital non-visual skills. Together, we can show parents how they can support their children and that their children can live the lives they want and that blindness does not need to hold them back. Um, just one real quick thing. Okay, very, very, very quick. It's Halloween. I have candy, so we're going to do table and treat. Um, I'm going to run around and put some candy on y'all's tables. All right. Here, too? Up here? Oh, yes, here. Oh, here. good. <laughs> Thank you, Carlton. Uh, we appreciate all of your help, your great work. Of course, uh, on your board, you now have Amira Lucas uh, on the national 
uh, parents division board. So Colorado is always in the middle of everything. So, um, All right, I am told uh, that we have something like 13 door prizes left. Uh, we're going to do three of them in just a minute. Then we're going to hear from Elizabeth Rouse. Uh, and Elizabeth, I need you to limit your marks to no more than 10 minutes. And then we're going to get into our business session. We're going to get a couple of reports from people like Kevin Worley, Peggy Chong, Michelle Tacone, and then we will turn to our elections. Uh, and after that, conduct the rest of our business. So we got a lot of things to do before 11.47 a.m. One of them is right now a door prize. All right. So we have another one of these big boxes of um, plastic storage ware containers and all that. Um, and that is going to go to Marlene Basta. Marlene Basta, are you out there in the Zoomosphere? Marlene or Brad? Zoom, 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 zoom. Do you see them? Marlene? She there? Huh? They're there? Oh, you're looking. You're looking. It's a little echoey up here. So. All right, next, draw in. All right. <clears throat> Again, Paul Sandoval Jr. Oh! <laughs> Parents are here. Good. That oh, works. Okay, he's in the room. All and right. He's in the room this time. Yay, Polly! All right, next prize, please. All right, so we have. Um, some Mary Kay satin hands. We have a tin of some goodies uh, from our at-large chapter. Actually, this one is an orange sugar scrub and some chocolate sea salt caramels. And that is going to go to... How about Ryan Carsey? Ryan! I assume you're here, Ryan. All right. Congratulations. Next prize, please. All right. And then we have a goodie bag with a bunch of different samples and things. Another one of these tins that I know has some candles. Um, also has a, a gift card for Buffalo Wild Wings in Colorado Springs. So let's give that to Diane McGeorge. Diane McGeorge. Ah, Diane. I don't think you're out there. But we'll give you a chance if you are. Any sign of her Zoom people? Yep. I am not seeing her. All right, thank you, Paul. Draw is in. Terry Smith still here? Terry, right, he left. Gone. Okay. Okay. All right, draw in. Bill Porter. Bill Porter. Not here. Okay. Not here. Is Who anybody is here? here? Right. At least a few. How right. about? Kevin Worley. Oh, he's here. Yeah. Congratulations. All right. So next, we're going to hear from our National Student Division, National Association of Blind Students. So you want to go to school. Here to present on what NABS is up to these days. I was president of NABS a long, long, long time ago, <laughs> over 30 years ago now. Um, anyway, to present uh, and give us a report about the National Association of Blind Students, here is the treasurer of NABS, Elizabeth Rouse. <laughs> now living in South Carolina. Correct. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm glad you asked if anyone was here, Scott. Now I know how big the group is, so I can decide if I want to be nervous or not. So this is perfect. Um, so I'm going to share just a couple things very briefly. I've learned the life lesson that Unlike President Riccobono, I don't have the talent to condense all of NABs into 10 minutes or less. Um, so I'm, I'm going to do you one better, Scott, and I'm going to shoot for about five. Um, all right. First and foremost, uh, that lesson was learned on, on TikTok. Are you familiar with TikTok, Scott? 
I've heard about it. Yeah. He's heard about TikTok. NFB has a TikTok now. Check it out. It's pretty fun. Um, but the, the life lesson there is uh, the more you talk, the more you try to put into your time. This, it's this thing that useful people call word vomiting, which is just an uncomfortable phrase, if you ask me. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys the gist. Okay, So NABS, National Association of Blind Students, um, has four main committees that, that harbor all of our initiatives. We've got outreach, fundraising, legislative and self-advocacy, and diversity, equity, and inclusion, our newest committee. They meet every, every month, once a month, um, and they have tons of stuff going on. Outreach does the NABS Now podcast. We do a monthly newsletter called NABS Notes. Um, and we also do the Student Slate blog post, which is uh, entertaining and punny because of the, the slate. I love it. Um, I love a good cringy pun. That's one of my fatal flaws. But um, fundraising is also super, super active year round. Those two committees meet on the same night, the second Sunday of the month. Um, and fundraising is currently in the swing of a very competitive fantasy football team, uh, team league. And last year, one of my favorite fundraising facts is our fantasy football champion was a 10 year old. And he beat Sean Calloway from DC. So he, he never gets to live that down. Feel free to mention it to him frequently as I do. Um, we also host uh, events at Washington Seminar. We had a very successful auction last year. Um, and fundraising is actually how I came into the Federation. Um, I, I got appointed to be a committee co-chair and then I worked with Dustin Cather and took his job when he decided he didn't want it anymore. So lots of relationship building in and amongst our committees. Um, legislative and self-advocacy, which is near and dear to my heart this year because I actually chair it, um, is, is exactly what it sounds like. It's taking initiative with our legislative priorities. Um, last month we heard from Jeff Kalock at the national office. Um, and we also talk about topics related to advocating for yourself in and out of the classroom. Um, so during the month of November, we're actually gonna talk about like advocating with your families during the holidays, which is always a fun one for all of you in this room. I'm sure I've gone through that at one point in, or another. Um, and finally, diversity, equity, and inclusion works really, really hard to make sure that everyone feels like they have a place and a voice in the National Association of Blind Students. Um, that is our newest committee run by Robert Parsons, who's up in Michigan with JJ. Um, and it's a very dynamic group. We've got all sorts of conversations and spotlights going on. Um, and the, the final thing I will say about committee work is there's this rumor that NABS is only for like people between the ages of 18 and 25. And that is so, so, so inaccurate. Um, in, in the exact same way that blind people really appreciate sighted allies, right? Like we wouldn't exist without our mentors, without Scott, without President Riccobono or Kevin Worley. All sorts of these folks pour into us as student leaders and that's how we grow. Um, so whether you are a CCB student or a lifelong learner and you're not actually in school, um, if you show up, we will put you to work. It's how NABS works. <laughs> um, so invite you all to, to hop in on any of those. Um, and the last thing that I'll just mention quickly is we also have a website, www.nabslink.org. And we were very fortunate to be one of the first um, website revamps when, when NFB launched all of its fancy website techniques. So we are super grateful for that. Um, so you can always check that out. Um, Jeff Kalock has also instilled in me that there's nothing that conveys to people how serious you are about something like a personal message. Um, so I'm going to conclude there and say that I'm around, I'm very loud and I'm hard to miss. Um, so if anyone wants to know more about NABS, if you've got a question, let's sit down and talk one-on-one. -on -one. That's exactly how we learn best. Um, and I, I really appreciate you guys being a, a captivated audience this morning. I hope I didn't bore you too bad. And Scott, I appreciate the floor. So thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. I'm proud of what our student division does. Uh, it's an important part of the work we do. I remember a time, Elizabeth, my first student division meeting in Kansas City, 1986, about 35 people in the room. Uh, and now when you go to a NABS meeting <laughs> at a national convention, uh, you're in a big, huge crowd of probably 400 people. So congratulations to you and, and the rest of the division and, and Trish, uh, you guys are doing a great job. And thank you for coming all the way from Columbia, South Carolina to be with us. So, and in honor of that, I think we ought to have a door prize. 
Oh, <clears throat> sorry, guys. All right, up next, we have an awesome goodie bag given by AINC. It has a gift card to two blind brothers um, and a couple of other things. And Chris Parsons is actually going to pull out a name from the bucket. All right. Chris, who's going to win? What's it say? Uh, Dula Jarbo. Dula! Here. You must be here, I hope. All right. Do you see your Savannah? All right. Congratulations. All right, and then I have another one, if I can do another one, Scott. Sure. All right, we have another big goodie bag. It has a $25 gift card to Buffalo Wild Wings in the Springs, a bunch of candy, some peanut brittle, a water bottle, and a bunch of other goodies in here. And that is going to go to... Who? I, I haven't won a door prize. Derek Crady. Who? Derek. Who did you say? Derek, are you here? De Grady. Uh, he is not here. Uh, what are we going to do at convention? No? Okay, no, no, this is a democratic organization. All those in favor of giving it to Derek, say aye. All right, all those opposed to giving it to Derek because he stepped out, say aye. Um, I'm afraid you're going to have to draw again. <laughs> What's that? Well, I'm sure you can, but... Yeah, just draw again. You've got to be in the room, you know, or in the Zoom room. I mean, here's... Here's then, an idea, folks. If you're going to go to the bathroom, get on Zoom. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. The next person is Ron Pratt. Ron Pratt. I bet you he's not here. That's uh, Trina's uh, husband, I'm thinking. Okay. Yep. He was is at the banquet. Oh. All right, draw again. All right. Uh, Hecker. Nate Hecker. Nate! I haven't heard him this morning. Where is he? Are you here, Nate? I guess nobody wants this prize. Oh, who we got? All right, one second. We're pulling a name. Yeah. Brian Baldwin. Ah, now he's been on Zoom all weekend. Are you out there, Brian? Looking for Brian, what can you do? Oh, boom, boom, boom. Raise, Raise your, your hand, hand, do the dance. <laughs> so speaking of the students and cabs and football stuff, you know, I'm in this survival school. Brian is school. here. He's here? Congratulations, sure. Brian. So anyway, ma ma is Martin out there in the Zoomosphere? Martin, if you're out there, I'm telling you now, because I haven't had, been able to do this yet, I'm taking the Chiefs uh, tomorrow night. Chiefs over the Giants. So uh, if you'll put that down for me, I appreciate it. Um, with my usual total of 53. <laughs> All right. <laughs> doing a little business, doing a little business, trying to support our students. Uh, all right, let's move to our business session of the convention. All about the business of the NFB. And to start this, uh, I will say that we're going to be taking some votes uh, later. And the only way that you're eligible to vote is if you registered for the convention and you were an active dues-paying member of the NFB of Colorado. And the way we're going to vote is by using our SWIFT platform again the, from Excitem. We used this last year. And we, we're going to do a test vote now. Are you ready for a test vote, Kevin? Okay, uh, so Kevin, maybe you can grab a mic and tell people what the question is. I think the poll is, what's your favorite Halloween candy, right? Is that what you said? Let's say that again. All right. Oh, I'm going to give you the phone number in a second, yes. Uh, it is 719. Everybody get your phones out. Get ready to save this number as NFBCO vote. 719er. So I'll give it a few times. 719 417 9806. 719 
4179806. One more time, 719-417-9806. And you can call that number and push, you know, whatever your choice is. Um, what, what is this actual poll, Kevin? What's the, the full question and the choices? What is the most popular Halloween candy? And I will, 719-417-9806. You can do either, you can call it, or text the number of your choice to that phone number. Okay. It's not the same as last year, no. Different number. Same system, different number. So it's 719-417-9806. And what are the choices of the most popular candies? Okay. Sorry, one sec. The internet kicked out, and it's oh. not updating. One second, and I'll go <laughs> through that. Uh, pesky internet. Pesky internet, yeah. 719-417-9806. 719-417-9806, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So, in fact, what I'm doing, well, maybe I'm doing. I'm getting right here. 719-417-9806. I'm going to call right now myself. Call 719-417-9806. I just turned it off, so I hope it says go away. One second. It's, it hasn't updated yet. It's doing it. It's, it's updating. Hang on. Oh, there are no polls, active polls, Kevin, so... Yes, I just stopped it so it would update. <laughs> Let me know when it's active again. I'm on conference. Hmm? All right, let's see if it did it this time. All right, it is live. The question is, what is the most popular... Halloween candy, and the options are one, Snickers, two, candy corn, three, Hershey's bar, four, peanut M&Ms. And when you put the digits in, if you text, it has to be the number not spelled out. <laughs> what is the most popular Halloween candy? Snickers is number one. Number two, candy corn. Number three, Hershey's bar. Number four, peanut M&M's. Well, I just registered my vote. Uh, I, I hope I win. It's, uh, I chose peanut, peanut butter M&M's. Peanut M&M's, I should say. So we're going to keep the poll open for 15 more seconds. Seven... 719-417-9806. No, so it, it's showing these. What's happening the, with uh, That was the previous question. Oh. Oh. Well, all right, guys. I forgot to change the response. <laughs> Okay, we're going to close the poll, Kevin, and we're gonna, you're going to tell us who won uh, among the candies. Uh. <laughs> that was my other test question, sorry. I'm glad you liked that so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kevin, what happened? All right, we had a total of 46 votes. Oh, that's pretty spread. We've got 17 for Snickers, 12 for candy corn, Seven for Hershey's and ten for peanut oh. M and M's. All right, so what that's do you mean? how we're that doesn't do mean it. that one. Peanut M and M's is the right answer. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, we could have your attention. So again, just one more time. That voting number is seven one nine four one seven ninety eight zero six. I would next like to introduce to you the. Director of Project Literacy, to talk to us about 
Project Literacy and what we've been doing over the last year. So here is Mr. Kevin Worley. We'll, uh, <clears throat> we'll briefly do an overview uh, because I know we're running late and everybody wants to vote, make sure they see if they're grumpy pants or whatever. <laughs> so Project Literacy was developed by the Board of Directors of the National Federation of the Blind of Colorado and other colleagues a couple of years ago. And people say, what is Project Literacy? And what we did is made it the program, the project, nebulous on purpose because project literacy gives us a way to galvanize a team of people and focus it wherever we want. So is it braille literacy? Yeah, we're gonna work on braille literacy. Is it NFB Newsline administration and fundraising and uh, expanding that program? Yes, it is NFB Newsline. And by the way, during the pandemic, we've had many, many, we've had a sharp increase in folks signing up for our NFB Newsline. And if you're not on NFB Newsline, please contact us and register and get on NFB Newsline. Um, it's a source of funding for us, but it also provides extraordinary literacy service. We have a lot of blind kids who do their homework assignments because of NFB Newsline. We have seniors who can no longer read the newspaper. What, what is the favorite thing that seniors like to read on NFB Newsline? Does anybody know? Obituary, he's absolutely right. Let me tell you what, if the obituaries are not in the Colorado Springs Gazette Project Literacy, i.e. me, gets a lot of calls. Uh, so that's one of the things we do under Project Literacy. As I say, it's a bit nebulous because we want to be able to fold any projects in under that. Someone says, okay, how about organizing around the state, our chapters? Now that the pandemic has hit a different stage, whatever that means, we're going to be getting back to building in Greeley, in Fort Collins, and we got a lot of focus on Pueblo, by the way, coming up in this next year. Well, what does building chapters have to do with literacy? What about, we've all heard of Braille literacy, financial literacy, what about blindness literacy? You know, there are a lot of people, non-blind and blind, who do not understand us, who do not get how it is that we do what we do and are blind people, and it is our mission in Project Literacy to reach out to these people and show them that you can be literate blind people. That isn't to say that you can read and do the typical, that is to say you have a familiarization with, you have an education about blindness. And that's one of the things that we take on Project Literacy. Let me also say we serve as a kind of an umbrella or a coordinating instrument to make sure that the Colorado Center for the Blind and CSDB and our private school initiative and Anchor are, are, are working together in the most collaborative way we can through the National Federation of the Blind Programs and Projects to make literacy available for blind kids, blind adults, and blind seniors. Uh, the other thing that we do is the blog. I was very gratified the other night to have someone else but me in a room, I don't even know who it was, talking about something that's coming up and somebody said, well, it was in the blog. And I thought, well, there you go. And in another event the other day, someone said, well, do you, how many in here read the blog? There was probably 25 in the room and about 12 said they read the blog. I'll take that. We send our Blind Colorado blog email um, to about over a thousand people now, uh, which is great. And they're, and they're all over the country, by the way, as well as parents and professionals in the field. Uh, CSDB constantly comments on our blog. Tanny Anthony reads our blog. Uh, and so we are really proud of what we're doing in the Blind Colorado blog. We want suggestions. We want your stories. Tanny said yesterday, we need your stories. We need your stories. You know what? We've got a lot of stories out there in the National Federation of the Blind. You don't really have to look for them, Dr. Anthony, really. You do, they're there. Read the Colonel books. Read the Braille Monitor, which she does. But we've got a lot of stories. And we need your help with the blog. We need you to read it. I hope you'll read it. We try to make it entertaining. You know, I'm a little quirky, so you never know what I'm going to put in the blog. Let me also thank so much Aaron Daly, Dan Burke, and Lisa Bonderson, too. They're, they're, they're the crack proofreaders, and they help me organize the blog quite a bit, help us do that. Any mistakes are mine. If it's good, it's those guys. 
the NFB6.dash, NFBCO6.dash, what does that have to do with literacy? Well, we help coordinate. We work with Cody, and we do a great deal of the work to coordinate our NFBCO6.dash. What does that have to do with literacy? Well, it raises money for Braille literacy and our literacy programs at the Private School Initiative as well as the Colorado Center for the Blind. Again, we've made project literacy nebulous enough so that the president and the board can say, Kevin, get a team together and focus on this project, whether it's organizing, whether it's Newsline, our blog. By the way, I'm very proud uh, of uh, Joe Elizabeth Pinto. Uh, she writes for the blog, a number of other folks do. Uh, we have had articles. Here's what I am very proud of. We've had a number of articles taken from the uh, Blind Colorado and published in the Braille Monitor, so I feel I mean, if Gary Wonder chooses to put them in the monitor, I feel like we're on the right track. Um, so, so as I say, I know we're short on time. If you want to know about how you can help, the other thing we do is kind of galvanize people around certain projects. In addition to the divisions and the chapters and the Colorado Center for the Blind, our goal is to, I don't, I don't want to do all this work. Jessica doesn't do, want to do all the work. Maureen doesn't want to do all the work. David doesn't do all the work. Dan doesn't want. So part of our deal, part of our project, is to make sure we can galvanize people around specific projects. We call it project literacy, literacy in blindness, in Braille, in library services, in the blog. A number of projects come under our project literacy. I'm gonna close because you guys can reach out, you can read the blog and know more about what project literacy is. We have a, as Dr. Jernigan used to say, a wop knowledger of a blog coming up in November. You're gonna to wanna to read it. We'll be a little late because of the convention. Here's another thing, we need pictures, folks. Sighted people, the non-blind, they like pictures. When they say, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words, they mean it. So I really, we need a good library of pictures. If you take a picture at an NFB event, at a convention, at a whatever it is you're doing, and it doesn't have to be a blindness activity at all. And we don't care, but we don't need more pictures of people standing in hotel rooms. We got a lot, we got a lot of people st standing in convention rooms. That's okay too, but if you're out skiing or if you're doing something interesting, I don't know, riding in a hot air balloon, uh, working with your grandchildren, please get us some pictures. It really does make a difference to our non-blind readers and we have a, a, lo a lot of those. I want to I want to close on a personal note. I'll try not to keep talking about this. I know that people probably um, are tired of that. This I just want to say um, that without my Federation family, the last 18 months, I, I, I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have made it through. You know, Bridget was such a dear and integral part of the National Federation of the Blind of Colorado when, <clears throat> when uh, Lisa Bonderson said at Bridget's memorial that Bridget um, helped her know how to run e big events like that that, 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 that Lisa would look at what's Bridget doing and do that would have made so much, would have been so important for her. And without the Federation love during the last year of her illness and after, I was a basket case, you guys. I was crazy. <laughs> and um, without my Federation family, Mark Riccobono called me almost every week after she passed. He's our national president. He called, how's she doing? What's, how are you doing? What's going on? I'd say, I know I owe you some work, sir. I know, I, don't worry about it. He said, do not take as much time as you need. The work isn't going anywhere. The work will be here when you're back. Scott Labar, our whole crowd, all of you guys, Julie and Dan, I can't even say, every one of you have been so dear to our family. I'm going to close by saying a word about the person who I think will be our next president. <clears throat> you know, Jessica Beecham has more energy than 92 people. I swear to gosh. I don't know how she does it. But let me tell you something you may not know. Not only is she training for a 100-mile race all the time, not only does she do all the things we know she does for Project Literacy, for the National Federation of the Blind, Sports and Rec Division, on and on. She's running a business now that is a very, very complex food service business in high security situations for the United States government. And through all of that, and I'll close with this guy because I know we're in behind, through all of that, during the last year of Bridget's life, she would off, often come to me and say, Kevin, you, you're in trouble. You need to take a night off. I'll stay with her after all that. She would be in there. She'd be rubbing Bridget's back. She would be doing anything that needed to be done in above everything that she does 
I'll, I'll be forever grateful to the National Federation of the Blind. You guys are my family. I love you all. Thank you. Well, of course, we love you too, Kevin. And I can't imagine what you've gone through in the last many, many months. Uh, and I'm glad, though, that we are there for one another. And that's what we do. As, we t as Mark talked about, as I talked about, love is fundamental and integral to everything we do. So thank you, Kevin. Well, Peggy Chong and Michelle Chacon, Kevin pretty much used up all of your time. Uh, but uh, we're going to give you a little time. Uh, so first, Peggy, uh, are you, you're here somewhere, I hope. Yep. Oh, here she comes, here she comes. The manager, director of our Preserving Historical Documents, PhD program, is, of course, Peggy Chong. And to give us a little bit more of an update from what we did in the presidential report, et cetera, here is the lovely and talented and now Raymond W. McGeorge awardee, Peggy Chong. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the National Federation of the Blind is a place to think out of the box and to go out of your comfort zone a little bit. And I want to tell you that sometimes that first step out of your comfort zone can be a real doozy. The, um, the records in the basement of the Colorado Center for the Blind that I found down there were inaccessible to me and I wanted a way to get at them. So I figured that the NFB of Colorado should help out. So Julie Hunter, who also takes great pride in those records, her and I talked. We visited librarians and archivists and got a lot of advice from them. We talked with some on the phone. And then two years ago, we came to the winter board retreat and pitched our uh, preservation of historical documents. And as the board should do, they questioned, do you have the stamina to do this? How do you, what are you gonna, are you gonna be able to get them done? How are they gonna be accessible and so on? And I gave a really good line and a pitch. And they bought it. And so then Julie and I set out on a project that we really felt a little overwhelmed about. <laughs> and it's working beautifully. Um, we had our archives um, digitized. That does not mean that they're accessible. In fact, a few people questioned whether or not we really needed to have them transcribed. And so after they were digitized, I sent the minutes from the 1960s, I think it was, and said, hey, go out, tell me what it says. And I never heard any more from anybody. Um, but we have had a slow recruiting of volunteers to transcribe our records until just uh, several months ago when we hit on a group at First Bank who gave us probably like 75 volunteers or whatever that really, really loved doing this and have transcribed almost all of our non-handwritten documents. We still have the handwritten documents to find people to want to do that. That is not an easy task. Um, not a lot of people read handwriting anymore, especially young people. Um, but we're almost done to that part. We've got the the nitty-gritty, the, the picky parts left to do, but we are probably close to 85% of getting all of these files transcribed, which is terrific. Um, through um, Scott's contacts, working with Marrakesh and so on, um, we think we may have found um, some uh, librarians and archivists who are going to help us because I'm not a librarian, I'm not an archivist. We want to put these files in a format that we can then share with other libraries or museums. Of course, we're going to send it to the Tenbrook Library, and we're very much wanting to send it to the Colorado State Library and so on. But the more libraries that we can share our files with, the greater our chance of not losing our history, um, it, uh, which is happening all over the country as far as we as blind people are concerned. Our history is going into the recycling bins and the shredders. And we have single source documents. We need to preserve them and show what a wonderful history that we have. For example, one of our members, 
one of our board members in the 1920s was a former governor of this state who I believe was legally blind while he was governor. And as soon as I get the firm documentation on that, I'm gonna write a wonderful story about him. But we are really progressing. We're finishing what uh, I consider year two of this five-year project. And hopefully by the end of next year or early in 23, we will have our files ready to be shared with other librarians and so on. Um, so that's my report, sir. Thank you, Blind History Lady. Excellent report, and it really is an important project because we understand better who we are now if we know what we were and who we were back then. All right, next I want to recognize the chair of our private school initiative, uh, Michelle Chacon, uh, to give us a little update. Are you out there, Michelle? Yes, I am. Good morning. I just wanted to give a quick update. I know we started back in January of 2019. We've come a long ways since that time when we first started the idea. Being a teacher of blind students, I felt like there is such a need for our students to be able to have more opportunity to learn and to practice reading Braille throughout the day and have access to assistive technology and other skills. So we started a committee, we started sending out surveys, we had town hall meetings, and we found that there's definitely a need, but there's still so much work to do to get this off the ground. So we're taking small steps. We started with some learning boxes last year that were a lot of fun. We had a small committee within our committee that helped produce and get these learning boxes out to the families. And then we met once a month virtually to have a lot of fun. And then we said, we need to move this up. We need to keep going. So we started a homework club this fall and it's, it's slow to get off the ground, but thanks to everybody's support and continued moving forward with families and reaching out and things like that. I feel like this is gonna become a very good project for our families. And just yesterday we had our IEP meeting with parents and there were some concerns that were brought up at the end of our meeting. And it just makes me feel like there's just such a need. And I want to create educational opportunities for our children so that they can succeed and have an equal playing ground and be able to find the employment that they want and live the lives they want. And that is my report. Thank you, Scott. Well, thank you. Uh, Michelle, uh, for all the work you do, and I, you know, in the last year when Anahi was working at Jeffco, uh, I would hear the stories about how the kids were not getting uh, just the basics, uh, and I think there's just such a great need. Part of the problem is, of course, that, you know, among disabilities, we are a small disability, and even in the overall special education program, there aren't enough resources. So as it finally trickles down to our blind kids, there's not enough money, there's not en there aren't enough teachers, there isn't enough time given to our blind kids. And as I said yesterday, we really need to take these matters into our own hands. And thank you, Michelle, for leading that effort uh, here in Colorado. All right, Mr. Cody Bear, if you will make your way up here, please, uh, on behalf of the nominating committee. I'm going to go to a door prize next. Door prize. Yes. Uh, and uh, why don't you give us a door prize? Could, could I give two? Yeah, sure. You're so generous, Scott. Thank you. <laughs> so for the first one we got here, we have some nice running gloves. We also have some shea soap and a little tin filled with some goodies. It'll be fun to rummage through. Audrey Marquez. Is she here? All right, drug in. Scott? Yes. Scott LeBar. Yay! All I'm right. here. I'm here. I'll raise my hand in Zoom. All right, well. Yay! 
Sometimes we get it wrong, you know. It's... Thank you. All right, we have one more. It is a goodie bag. It has some Mary Kay. It has another one of those lovely tins in there and some samples. And this one goes to Olive Wilkinson. Is she here? Or on Zoom? Yeah. Olive? Olive Wilkinson? No Olive that we know of. Raise your hand if you're one of the phone numbers. Star, star nine, star nine, star nine, star nine. Star nine. Okay. All right, let's move on. All right. Let's pull another one. Shao Trila. Hey! Shao? Yay, right. Shao! Thank you. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're going to do. We now turn to our elections. The way that we do them in the NFE of Colorado is we receive first a report from our nominating committee. Uh, and if you adopt that report, those names are placed into nomination. Does not mean that those people are elected at that time when you adopt the report. Uh, and then we turn to the elections themselves. Now, obviously, for the first election that we will hold for the office of president, uh, it is a special occasion. And what we're going to do there is we will conduct the election, uh, and then I will make a short presentation to the individual I expect will win. Then we have a special guest uh, in the room, or close to the room, um, hopefully, <laughs> that will make a presentation uh, to uh, the new president. And then we will have the big boss, our national president, uh, uh, say a few words. Um, and then we expect the new president to make some remarks. So that's kind of the order in which we will go. So first, I want to recognize uh, the chairman of our nominating committee. This is the first time he's chaired the committee. And I want to, before recognizing him though, I want to thank Julie Deaton for serving as our chair of the nominating committee for many, 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 many years. So let's give it up for Julie. Thank you, Julie. But here is the Honorable Cody Bear. Good morning, good morning, my Federation family. It's an honor to stand here before you today and present the report of the nominating committee. Um, placed into, we met on Friday night at convention and are placing the following names into a nomination for officers as well as four board members who will all be running for two-year terms as well as the delegate and the alternate delegate for convention in 2022 in New Orleans. Um, placed into nomination for president is the name of Jessica Beecham. First Vice President, the nominating committee is placing into nomination the name of Scott Labar. Second Vice President, the nominating committee places into nomination Ma Maureen Newtbelt. For Secretary, the name of Julie Deedon has been placed into nomination. And for Treasurer, the name of Cody Bear has been placed into nomination. The Four board members' positions, all running for two-year terms, who have been placed into nomination are Paul Sandoval, Jeanette Fortin, Diane McGeorge, and Renee Anderson. For delegate to the convention, the name of Jessica Beecham has been placed into nomination, and the name of Scott Labar has been placed into nomination for the alternate delegate. That concludes my report. It's been uh, moved and seconded that we adopt the nominating committee report. Now, I don't think we need to turn to Swift to take this vote, uh, but if it's close, then we will. But let's uh, see if we can do it uh, via voice vote. All those in favor of adopting the nominating committee report, 
please say aye. aye. Those opposed? It is adopted. So that means we now turn to the election uh, of the president. And uh, Kevin, I would get ready a poll for this. I think we all want to vote affirmatively and have register our votes. Uh, in the name of Jessica Beecham has been placed into nomination. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Okay, it's been moved and seconded that nominations cease and we elect Jessica Beecham by acclamation. So let's open the poll, Kevin. <laughs> One yes, two no. You can vote against it. Call 719-417-9806. It's not working? One yes, two no. I just voted. All right, so we did that poll. Or we'll keep that open for a second, but I think we'll do a voice vote, too. Uh, Paul, can you unmute everybody on Zoom? We'll, we'll have some fun with this, too. We'll, we'll, we'll confirm Jessica a couple different ways. Uh, so there's no doubt, no... No allegations of fraud can be made. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All, for all those that are in the room and on Zoom, unmute yourself. And we're going to do a voice vote as well. All those in favor of electing Jessica Beecham, our next president, by acclamation, all those say aye. 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 Hey, can we vote twice or no? <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, would that be considered like voter fraud? Jessica Beecham is elected. Uh, I. It's hard to know exactly what to say, Jessica, but it's your problem. Uh, Which chapter Jessica is going to be in? We're going to mute everybody again. Hello, Alfonso. All right. Uh, it has been, as I've been saying all weekend, my deep and true honor to serve as your president. And I know that Jessica will do an incredible job as our next president. And, you know, none of us is running away. We're going to be there right behind you, supporting you. But you will lead us in new directions and help us achieve greater heights because the job must be done. There is so much more work left to do. You know, when we're at a convention like this, we all feel at home. We all feel a full part of our community. We don't have to prove anything. We can be the people that we are authentically. But when we step out there in the world, and the first thing that people see is our blindness, we get treated differently. And until that really changes on a comprehensive level, we will continue to face the problems that we now face. So, Jessica, I have here for you, this is my presentation to you, this is a gavel. The gavel is the sign of leadership, the sign of presiding over meetings. And we have a gavel that is uh, inscribed with the NFB of Colorado logo, and it has on it JBB. This is going to be your gavel to lead us over the next who knows how many years. Here you go, Jessica. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Works like a charm. Yeah. Now, we're going to hold off on your remarks, as I said before. Uh, is the special <coughs> guest here? My guest. She's coming? Special <laughs> guest.
because I know these people. Well, right. you know, um, uh, I would now like to introduce to you some of them. somebody that Jessica knows a little bit, Laura Beechin. Yeah, there's history, not real close personal history, but the history. Zoom problem. With them and their work and. <laughs> the vagaries of... All right, I think we're good. Go ahead, Laura. Good morning, everyone. My name is Laura Beecham, and yes, if the name sounds familiar, uh, <laughs> Jessica is my sister. Uh, my older sister, to be exact. <laughs> I just want to make sure I get that out of the way. Um, Jess didn't know I was speaking today, but I needed her to know how proud we all are of her. Um, and I speak not just for me, uh, but for my family as well, who are watching on Zoom right now. Um, whew, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if she knows this, but Jessica has always been my hero, my role model in life, and everything she did, I wanted to do. Everywhere she went, I wanted to go. I wanted to be just like her. As you can imagine, that didn't always pan out for me as her little sister. <laughs> we didn't always get along, but the older we got, the closer we became. When I was in high school and she was in college, she told me something that I will never forget. She told me to never get stuck, that the world was so big and it had so much to offer. And I didn't, I didn't get stuck. I did what I had been doing as her baby sister my whole life. I followed her. I went to college where she went to college and I traveled with her and I lived with her and I lived in her favorite places and I even followed her to Colorado. <laughs> Eight years later, but who's counting? <laughs> Jess taught me to reach for the stars, to never get up, give up, and to escape my comfort zones and challenge myself to become more than I ever thought that I would. Jessica inspires me to be more than I think I can be every single day, and she is the strongest, hardest working, most dedicated and loving person I know. She fights hard for the people and things that she loves and believes in, and she never gives up, no matter how impossible the challenges may seem. And as she continues to accomplish achievement after achievement, I too am inspired again and again to be more than I am. And today, I am so honored to share her and her ability to inspire and accomplish things that seem impossible with all of you. I'm so proud of you, Jess. You are so fearless and inspiring, and you continue to amaze me every single day of my life. I feel so lucky to be your sister, to have you as a permanent mentor that you can, can't just, can't, you just can't seem to get rid of. <laughs> Congratulations, Jessica. I'm so in awe of you, and I always will be. I hope each of you get to experience just a glimpse of the amazingness that I see in Jessica every single day. Thank you. Very nicely done, man. Thank you. Very nicely done, uh, Laura. And um, a lot of us have that honor and privilege of knowing Jessica, and we're aware of what she can and will undoubtedly do. Um, I now would like to turn to our national president uh, for his remarks. Here is President Riccobono. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, what I would say at this momentous occasion, uh, I'm going to echo what I said last evening. Um, what's going to make this a successful transition is that everybody in this room takes ownership, and on Zoom, takes ownership of um, helping to support our president-elect. Uh, the job of serving an elected office in the Federation is one we take seriously. We give our leaders uh, power and we expect them to use it responsibly to build our organization. But the only way that really happens effectively is if there's a whole group of people prepared to support that leader. And so 
Um, I call us this morning together uh, to support our president-elect who, um, uh, from every indication around this convention, is uh, prepared to take on this awesome responsibility, even though she has no clue what she's stepping into, <laughs> because none of us do when we first get started, but uh, we come together to give her the faith by electing her to know that she can do the job, and we're going to be there to support her every step of the way. So, Madam President-elect, congratulations. So, before I get into my more formal remarks, I just have to say a huge thank you to neighbor Karen and Julie Hunter for the countless hours of volunteering that they've been putting in this weekend. I love you guys. The National Federation of the Blind of Colorado is built on tremendous leadership. Ray and Diane McGeorge and Scott Labar have taken our affiliate to astounding heights. Our advocacy efforts, our impactful legislation, and our Colorado Center for the Blind create a space where leaders can come, dig in, do the work, and thrive. All you have to do is look around to see our tremendous leadership and talent base. If you're a blind person, there's no better place to live than Colorado and no better affiliate in which to serve. Thank you for your trust and confidence and my ability to lead us into the next chapter. As President Riccobono mentioned, we haven't found the limits of possible when it comes to the capacity of blind people. I look forward to working with each of you as we continue to push that envelope. I'm certain that I'll stumble. I'm equally certain that together we will have some amazing successes. And I'm inspired and eager to work closely with each of you to continue to change what it means to be blind and improve lives for blind people. Together with love, hope, and determination, let's go build the National Federation of the Blind of Colorado. <laughs> Can I do one more thing? Yes. So, I. <laughs> My Federation family is so important to me. You've met so many of them. Uh, I mean, you are so many of them are our uh, Federation family, but my Federation family and my um, Beecham family haven't all gotten to meet each other necessarily. So I've got my mom and dad, Marsha and Doug, are on Zoom with us. Can we unmute them? Hi, mom and dad. I don't know if they're there, but they were there earlier. And I, I just want to say a special congratulations to my dad, Doug. He's been um, clean for and sober for 18 years, and he just got his citizen's rights restored. Right. That's a huge accomplishment. Um, and he's working toward a, a governor's pardon that would clear his, his felony. So I think that's a really cool accomplishment and thing to be proud of. And so while my family, I know, is um, proud of me for the things that we are all able to do together here in the NFB of Colorado, I'm proud of them as well. And I want you guys to get to know them more as we um, continue to move forward and work together. So I love everybody here and thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah, Jessica, don't forget this. Yes. All right, now, so uh, as President Riccobono said, she's president-elect because 
per our Constitution, she officially becomes president when we gavel this convention closed. Uh, and so at the end of the convention, at 11.47, <laughs> uh, both Jessica and I will use our gavels and close the convention, and then, like magic, she becomes your president. Congratulations, Jessica. Thank you. Now, uh, the nominating committee has placed my name in nomination for the office of first vice president, and I'm going to ask our current first vice president to uh, do this election since, you know, I, well, I, I guess I'm biased in this election. I, Jessica? And we, we might as well just do this for you via voice vote. Uh. All right, perfect. The name of Scott Labar has been placed in nomination for the position of first vice president. Are there any nominations from the floor? Are there any nominations from the floor? Last time, are there any nominations from the floor? It's been moved and seconded that Scott Labar be elected as first vice president by acclamation. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? You better not be. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, uh, Jessica, and I do want to thank all of you for electing me to this post. I see my job uh, as twofold. First of all, I'm primarily now in charge of vice, and I will do my level best to honor that duty. Seriously though, my job is to support Jessica and this organization. And Jessica, anything you need from me, it's yours. So please know that. Uh, and the only other thing I want to say now, well, is at the end of convention when we adjourn, I'll become first vice president. And the, the first thing I'm going to say, join with me. It's Jessica's problem. <laughs> All right. We now turn to the election for the office of second vice president. The name of Maureen Neatfeld has been placed into nomination. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Okay. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that we elect Maureen Neatfeld by acclamation. If you want to, Paul, just open up the Zoom room. Everybody should be able to vote for this. Um, and so all those in favor of electing Maureen Neatfeld by acclamation, please say aye. 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 All right. Those opposed? The motion carries, and we have now elected Maureen Neatfeld as our second vice president. Maureen. Speech. Oh, well, let's get her a mic. Get that lady a mic. Yeah. It's moving, 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 rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> All right. So next up will be the Office of Secretary, just so you know. Okay, thank you everybody so much. It has been an honor to serve on this board alongside of you, Scott, with you as our president, and it is gonna be an honor to serve with you, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> My best friend, I love you so much. We've been joking that um, it's Jessica's problem, but Jessica, it's our problem. Lean on <laughs> us. We love you. We love the National Federation of the Blind of Colorado. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. And uh, Julie Dean, get uh, ready uh, to unmute yourself. We now turn to the office of secretary of the affiliate. The name of Julie Deaton has been placed into nomination. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Okay, the acclamation thing has been moved. All those in favor of uh, electing Julie Deaton as our secretary of via acclamation, please say aye. Any opposed? Soon this meeting is being live streamed by staying. 
Julie All Dean right. is elected secretary. Julie. Thank you, everybody. It is an honor to serve with all of you in the, on the board, but also we all work together in the NFB of Colorado to make a difference. So even if you're not on the board, we are looking forward to having all of us work together to make a major difference for all blind people and congratulations, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. You are a co -host now. All right. The next office up for election is that of treasurer in the name of the Honorable Cody Bear has been placed into nomination. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? All right. It's been moved and seconded that we elect Cody Bear via acclamation. All those in favor of so doing, please say aye. 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 There you go. All those opposed? Cody, you're elected. Any comments? Thank you, everybody. It's an honor. It's a true honor to serve with this officer team, this board, and serve in, as a treasurer for all of you guys in this room and those not in this room. I, to, I just want to be remiss if I didn't make a comment. Um, it's been so great to work with Scott over the past 10 years, and I've really appreciated everything that he's done for me and his mentorship, as well as um, Jessica. If it wasn't for the mentorship given to me by Jessica when I was um, first getting into the Federation, I would have never been able to be as successful as I am now and would not be standing here before you all today. And I think we picked the definitely the most deserving person out there to be president. There couldn't be an, a better fit for this to lead this organization than Jessica Beecham. And I look forward to working with her to, as Maureen said, this anything that happens in this affiliate is all of our problem and we're gonna accomplish great things and move mountains together. Thank you, Cody. I know I always give you a rough time, but you are indeed my, my favorite CPA in the world, so. <laughs> um, all right, so that moves us to board position number one, and I do believe, uh, and you can correct me, uh, Mr. Chairman, but the name of Paul Sandoval is nominated to this office. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? <laughs> It's been moved and seconded that we elect Paul Sandoval by acclamation to board position one. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed. <laughs> he is elected, Mr. Sandoval. So I'll keep it nice and short. Uh, thanks, everybody, for your confidence. I look forward to getting back to work. Let's go get it. All right. Now, uh, Mr. Nominating Committee Chair, I do need the name of the next person because I didn't memorize the order. Janet, Jeanette Fortin. Okay, the name of Jeanette Fortin has been placed into nomination for board position two. Are there any other nominations? Are there any further nominations? Are there any other nominations? <laughs> oh, good, they're back. All right. It's been moved and seconded that we elect Jeanette Forden to board position two by acclamation. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed. <laughs> Jeanette is elected. Jeanette. Thank you, everybody, and I look forward to working with Jessica and our NA. We're a family. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jeanette. I believe Diane McGeorge's name is next. Yes, sir? All right. This affiliate has been placed into a nomination for board position number three. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Okay. It's been the name of Sandy Schleich has been placed into nomination. Sandy, do you accept? Okay. All right. Um, 
Do, let's see, do we have, well, let's, now we have to end uh, this nomination process. Are there any further nominations? Okay. Uh, let me ask again, though, are there any other nominations? Okay, there's been a motion that we cease nominations and move to the election. All those in favor of ceasing the nominations, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Okay. All right, the motion carries, so we now move to the election. Uh, do we have Diane on the phone? Okay. So what we're going to do is, first I'm going to give you an opportunity to speak, Sandy. And so we can get you a microphone, and then I will uh, let somebody uh, speak for Diane if there is somebody so willing. What's that? Okay, well, <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. Sandy, you're recognized for a minute. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm not used to a microphone, so I almost dropped it. <laughs> okay, so I'm sure you guys, most of you know who I am. I'm from um, the Pueblo chapter of the president up there. And um, I'm running for this position because I believe that we need to have more people on the board representing Southern Colorado. And um, there's right at this moment, there's only one person on the board that I know of that's, that does not live in Colorado Springs or Denver area. And if I am elected to this position, I will do my best to support Pueblo and the rest of Southern Colorado um, on this um, it, for the NFB. Thank you. Okay. I will recognize someone for one minute to speak on behalf of Diane McGeorge. Does anybody seek the floor? Audio <laughs> now unmuted alert. Julie Deaton would Curtis like to Curtis Song is recognized for 60 seconds. Thank you. Let me say that uh, Diane McGeorge, I first met her in 1975. And since that time, she has been um, a longtime leader. Everybody knows all the good qualities about her. I think she's uh, going, still going strong. I think that she is mentally sharp still. And I do believe that we need some of this, uh, what I'd call, long-term leadership experience, which Diane can bring to the Board of Directors of Colorado. And I'm honored to speak in support of her. Thank you very much. So what I propose we do, and you can tell me, uh, we, or we can vote on this, but what I propose we do is first a voice vote uh, of those in the room and in Zoom. Uh, if the question is in doubt, then we will move to the uh, voting system. Uh, so, uh, without objection, we will do that. Um, all those in favor of electing yeah. Diane McGeorge, please say aye. Aye. Okay. All those in favor of electing Sandy Schleich to board position three, please say aye. 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 The chair is not in doubt. Diane McGeorge has won the election. I, I want people to know that Diane would be here, except she does struggle very much with technology and getting into the Zoom room. Um, Diane, you know, she's, any of us would like to be as strong and committed as she is when we reach her age. Uh, and I am glad that Diane has been reelected. All right, we now move to the position number four, the name of Renee Anderson, is that correct? Yes, yes. okay, the name of Renee Anderson has been placed into a nomination. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? All right, 
It's uh, been moved and seconded that we elect Renee by acclamation. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Renee, you're elected. <laughs> Renee, I mean, I assume she was here. Oh, Renee, are you out there? Okay, well, uh, thank you, Renee, for your service, and we will move on to the elections for delegate and alternate delegate. The name of Jessica Beecham has been placed into nomination for delegate to our national convention. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? All right, the acclamation thing has been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor of electing Jessica as our delegate to National Convention, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. You're elected, Jess. Any additional words? <laughs> all right. And I might as well just handle this. Uh, I, my name has been placed into nomination as alternate Jess delegate, and I'm sure I won't be needed at all because Jessica will be there. But in case, you know, something happens, uh, I will be at convention. So are there any further nominations? Any further nominations? Any further nominations? All right, it's been moved and seconded that we elect me to be the alternate uh, delegate to national convention. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. All right. <laughs> yes. No, I think that's probably... Well, that's the way I'm interpreting it, Kevin. All right. Uh, I, I, we're, I'm elected. All right. So, thank you, everybody. Congratulations to Jessica and all those who have been re-elected or elected. And we, we need to get a big old door prize. All right. How about $25 and some of those Thin Mint almonds? She's drawing. Next, we're going to turn to uh, our financial report. Cody, do you want to make your way up here? Trina Pratt, is she in the Zoom? I haven't seen Trina this morning. Are you online, Trina? Both, her, both you and your husband have been uh, drawn this morning. That's, well, what are the I, odds? What are the odds? Know, All right, move on. I know this person is going to be happy. Marty Rand. Marty! Is she still in the room, right? <laughs> Make sure you stand up or raise your hand so our runner can find you. Um, I do want to, while I have the mic, just thank Brittany and Aaron for helping me out with door prizes and a special thanks and shout out to our little runner, Miss Savannah Adams. So hey. give it up to Savannah. Thank you. All, all right, so, uh, Cody. Here is the Honorable Cody Bear, Treasurer of the NFP of Colorado, with our financial report. Savannah. Savannah, come see me. Okay, so these are the, what I'm going to read now first is a um, profit and loss and statement for the NFB of Colorado. And keep in mind that this is um, through September 30th. Um, 2021 so anything between now and then will not be reflected but i will um upon the conclusion of reading this report go through some highlights of information pertaining to this year um between now and september 30th so we start with our income statement as of september 30th um total contributions $8,460. 
grants unrestricted, $27,053. His pres preservation of historical documents, $2,000. In kind donations, $48,237 in kind expense, $48,237. And just a note on this real quick, this relates to the advertising that we were provided from Comcast. We need to recognize it on our um, income statement and then back out the expense. That's why you're seeing this is a new item for this year. NFB Newsline contributions, 90,000, NFBCO convention income, $9,005, other income, $254, private school initiative income, $15,529, 6 dash 5K, $7,596, Total income, $159,899. Our expenses for the year are as follows. Accounting fees, $9,100. Assistance to blind people, $504. Awards and grants. $16,650, bank fees, $768, Bell program, $82, board meetings, $853, chapter development, $230, Historical Preservation Project, $89. Insurance, $1,077. Insurance Workman's Comp, $262. Internet Services, $289. Licenses and Fees, $304. National Convention, $58. NFB Newsline Expenses, $76,125. Payroll Taxes, $1,201. Postage and Shipping, $769. Private School Initiative Expenses, $3,183. Public education, zero dollars. Salaries gross, $15,693. Scholarships, $150. Six dot dash expenses, $5,513. State convention expenses, $316, supplies $166, taxes general, $0, telephone expenses, $1,489, total expenses for the year are $134,000. $937 for a net um, income position of, for the year of $24,961. And So and that concludes um, our bank balance in the
um, account is $111,777. Um, a few income um, items that I wanted to bring to all your attention. Um, I know you guys are probably looking at six dot dash thinking that that number is really low, and it is because the report's as of 9.30 um, or September 30th. Um, and our total income from the six dot dash um, to date is $15,357. Um, I also wanted to share real briefly about a project that we're working on um, with regards to the employee retention tax credit that will um, be a tax credit that we're going to receive from the IRS on payroll taxes um, paid by the NFB of Colorado. And we've, we'll be able to get a credit all for every quarter from this quarter, which is the third quarter of 2021, going back to the second quarter of 2020. We have filed the return for the second quarter of 2020, and we'll be receiving a credit of $3,150. So I expect, if we do the math, that's four more quarters we have to file, we should get another about $12,000 of income from that program. Um, I also a lot of information kind of vomited all at you at once, so I'll send an email out to Colorado Talk that will also include um, the report in case people would like to look at it as we don't, since we don't have Braille copies available today. And that concludes my report. Yeah. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt the report. Any discussion or questions? Okay, all those in favor of adopting our financial report, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I will reflect also that it said in the report convention expenses were only $316. Well, it'll be a lot more than that uh, once we get all the bills and everything else. Of course, we've raised some money, too, over the weekend. So, uh, Marianne, after uh, resolutions, we're going to go to the last auction items. Uh, and we need to do them quickly, obviously. I know that some CCB students and staff need to go up to the rooms. Uh, do that as you need to do so that uh, you can be down here before they uh, turn off all the authorizations to your room, unless you can convince the hotel to extend it a little bit of time. Um, Curtis uh, and Dan, I don't know if you're in the Zoom with us. Dan, are you out there? Okay. Uh, my understanding, he really wasn't feeling well at all. Um, Dan is here. Oh, he's here. Dan. Where? Is he there? Dan? He's in, he's in Zoom, and he's co-hosted, so he should be able to unmute as Okay, he well, do you have a mic, Cruz? No, I don't. Do we have a mic on the table with a stand? No? Oh. All right. Hi, Scott. This is Dan. Oh, and we, uh, Chris, where are you? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, as you know, folks, we passed one resolution on Friday, uh, 202101. So, we will be turning to 202102. Dan or Curtis, do you want to introduce this one? Are we talking which one? The. The second resolution. Yeah, I have it. So I'll, I'll introduce the resolution, and Chris Parson will read it. She needs the mic on the podium because of the Braille. Oh, thing. Go for it. Yeah. So this is um, resolution 2021-02. We have a total of six to consider today. Most, many of you may have heard of these on, um, what day was that? Friday. <laughs> So this is regarding the inaccessibility of remote device interfaces for assistive hearing instruments. Go, Chris. All right, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Oh, wow, all right. Whereas manufacturers of assistive hearing instruments, for example, hearing aids and cochlear implant processors, 
are to an increasing extent designing these devices to be operated with remote controls, smartphones, or computer software. And whereas it is too often the case that the technology used to operate assistive hearing instruments intended for use by deafblind individuals is neither accessible to nor usable by the very people they are supposed to benefit. And Whereas, to add insult to injury, in many cases, the programs used to control the assistive hearing devices cannot even be operated with the most readily available access technologies, such as voiceover and talkback. And whereas once a person who is deafblind starts to use a specific implantable hearing device, they are locked into using a specific set of software and hardware and are not able to switch to an application that might be more compatible with access technologies designed to be used by people who are deafblind. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the National Federation of the Blind of Colorado and convention assembled this 31st day of October in the city of Lone Tree, Colorado, that this organization demand manufacturers of assistive hearing aids and cochlear implants used by persons who are deafblind meaningfully engage with the deafblind community to design these technologies to be fully accessible to the deafblind, and be it further resolved that this organization insist that manufacturers of assistive hearing instruments and cochlear implants actively seek and use the services of, of testers who are deafblind to ensure that these products are truly beneficial to the deafblind. The committee recommends uh, and moves the adoption. Second. Is there a second? There's a second. All right. Okay, Mr. President, are we taking a excited Is vote? anybody seeking the floor? Okay, all those in favor of adopting 2021-02, please say aye. Get ready. You're not done. Those opposed? Aye. Yeah. I think that's a late, latent uh, Zoom vote in favor. Um, no. And yep. so this is adopted. Congratulations. All right, now. I, one thing we did forget right after Cody's report was the honor roll call of chapters and divisions. Uh, in terms of pledges and contributions. Uh, we will get to that uh, after we hear from President Recavono, which will be after resolutions. All right. So <coughs> um, from this point Next forward, yes. I am asking the reader to skip all the part about National Federation of the Blind of Colorado and Convention Assembled this 31st day of October in the city of Lone Tree, well, Colorado. And, I, and you know, we're running short on time, so yeah, I'm going to yeah, ask yeah. the convention this. Right. Um, you, many of you, were in resolutions the other day, uh, and I would entertain a motion that we just read the resolves. So move. It's been moved and seconded that we only read the resolves, and if there's any discussion or debate about a resolution, we'll read the whole thing, but let's just proceed in that manner. All those in favor of reading just the resolves at this time, please say aye. Aye. Okay, tell uh, us, Curtis, about what this next, I didn't take any up. Resolution 2021-03 is go. regarding um, accessible, or inaccessible, regarding accessible technology in Colorado state government. So here are the resolves. All right, be it resolved that this organization express its recognition of the small gains in overall accessibility that have been achieved with the help of the Governor's Office of Information Technology, OIT, in particular improved familiarity with our with a non-visual access to the Google suite of products, e.g. Google Docs, Google Drive, et cetera, and be it further resolved that this organization condemn and deplore the decades of non-access to the workforce management system, Kronos, that blind employees of the state of Colorado have been forced to endure, and be it further resolved that this organization strongly urge the Colorado General Assembly, Governor Jared Polis, and the Governor's Office of information technology to increase funding personnel and specialized expertise so that the promise of equity diversity and inclusion becomes a reality for blind Coloradans that is proven by solid achievement and equal access to state software systems and hardware the committee moves adoption Is there a second? okay all those in favor of adopting 2103 please say aye <laughs> Those opposed say nay. The motion carries. It is adopted. Resolution 
four regarding ride share services in Colorado. Be it resolved that this organization call upon the Colorado Public Utilities Commission, the governmental entity which regulates transportation network companies such as Uber and Lyft, to investigate the rideshare services provided by these companies to ensure that the business model they use is not injurious to the needs of Colorado's most economically disadvantaged citizens. And be it further resolved that this organization requests that the Colorado Public Utilities Commission provide a report of its findings to the public no later than February 2022. And be it further resolved that this organization call upon the Colorado General Assembly to investigate and provide the necessary oversight to ensure that the network transportation companies in Colorado, such as Uber and Lyft, provide a measure of equality, consistency, and transparency when offering rideshare services in the state. The committee moves the adoption. All right, it's been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2021-04. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of so adopting, please say aye. 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 Motion carries, it is adopted. 05, please. Resolution 2021-05 regarding the inaccessibility of Kronos. Be it, uh, be it resolved that this organization condemn and to deplore the policies and practices in Colorado state government that have permitted Kronos, a system that is completely inaccessible to and unusable by blind people who use screen reading software, to operate for decades, and be it further resolved that this organization declare that Kronos is a system that is in direct violation of state law and determinedly opposed to the spirit of equity, diversity, and inclusion expressed in Governor Polis's executive order D-2020-175, in which he declared, quote, we do not build walls of exclusion in Colorado, we build ladders of opportunity, end quote. And be it further resolved that this organization insists that all agencies in Colorado state government move speedily towards the implementation of a Kronos replacement that is fully accessible to everyone, including blind users who rely on screen reading software, thereby creating a ladder of opportunity, which enables them to perform the duties of their jobs without any unnecessary impediments to full and equal access to information. The committee moves the adoption. Second. Okay, it's been a moved and seconded that we adopt 202105. Is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor of so adopting, please say so by saying aye. Aye. <laughs> Any opposition, please say nay. It is adopted. Thank you. Now, last but not least, 20, 21, 06. Actually, this is uh, not. Oh. This, yeah. this is 2021 20, 06 regarding the danger that lead pedestrian intervals present to blind pedestrians. Be it resolved that this organization call upon all municipalities, counties, and transportation authorities in the state of Colorado to discuss leading pedestrian intervals with the National Federation of the Blind of Colorado and other stakeholders within the disability community with the goal of implementing a non-visually accessible approach which affords blind pedestrians the same safety advantages of leading pedestrian intervals that are available to everyone else. The committee moves the adoption. All right, it's been moved and seconded that we adopt 2021-06. Any discussion? All those in favor of so adopting, please signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Let's wait for Zoom to come in. Aye. There. All right, any opposed, please say nay. <laughs> it is adopted. Resolution 2021-07. Okay. All right. This is the last one regarding an uh, accessible, equitable, and inclusive solution to rideshare pickup locations at the Denver International Airport. Ah, yes. All right. Oh, you keep moving the microphone. There we go. 
be <laughs> and he keeps moving my microphone. There we go. Okay. <laughs> be it resolved that this organization express its extreme frustration and disappointment with the city of Denver and the administration of the Denver International Airport, DIA, for failing to consult with the National Federation of the Blind of Colorado and the broader community of travelers with disabilities before implementing a change, which ultimately makes it harder for air travelers to get ride shares at DIA. And be it further resolved that this organization call upon the city of Denver and the DIA administration speedily to consult with the National Federation of the Blind of Colorado and other stakeholders within the broader disability community to find a more convenient, safer, more accessible, and more equitable method of rideshare pickups at DIA and that this procedure be one that blind travelers can implement independently with the minimum of inconvenience or need for assistance from members of the public. And be it further resolved that this organization insist the City of Denver and the DIA administration to consult with the National Federation of the Blind of Colorado and other stakeholders within the broader disability community before implementing any future changes to rideshare pickup procedures. The committee moves the adoption. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt 2021-07. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of so doing, please signify by saying aye. aye. <laughs> those opposed, say nay. It's adopted. Um, before closing, I'd like to thank the members of the committee. You all know who you were and are for all of the hard work, and let's give it up for our reader there, Chris Parsons. Here, here. Demonstrating that Braille readers can read as well as, if not better than, people who can read print. There we go. <laughs> well, Chris, you do, do an awesome job. I echo all the thanks to the committee. I want to thank Curtis Chong and Dan Burke for co-chairing the committee. Thank you very much. Dan, if you're out there, thank you. So, all right, uh, next I want to recognize our national president, and uh, as, as he is speaking, Lisa, if you would come up here, that would be great. Um, and I want to recognize uh, Mark Riccobono for his final remarks to this convention. Uh, Mark, it's just, I can't express in words how much, your, how much your friendship, your support of this affiliate means to me and all of us. Your, a tremendous national president, and we're so lucky that you were with us during this great and important weekend. Here is our president, Mark Riccobono. Uh, thank you, Scott, so much. Uh, it's been a great, great weekend. It's so great to be in person with all of you, and I look forward to our next opportunity to be in person, but until then, um, let me share um, one more quick thought, which is, um, besides the great um, effort and joy that's found in this affiliate, uh, I, I do want to express my deep appreciation that this affiliate um, really does help lead the way in um, demonstrating the value and importance of supporting a national movement. Uh, Colorado is definitely one of the places where um, the notion that uh, we're stronger together and because we have a national movement, that value is, is threaded through everything we've experienced and talked about at this convention. And that is an important value that a lot of people miss about our organization and what we do. We coordinate the work that we do. And uh, the fact that you all contribute in so many ways to the national movement does make a significant difference. So thank you for that. I did not take the opportunity to, to mention yesterday that in the month of October, we've had a matching uh, grant from a, an anonymous donor um, that we've been matching donations during Blind Equality Achievement Month. So if you made contributions to that matching effort, thank you. Uh, if you didn't, uh, you're still welcome to make contributions anytime to the National Federation of the Blind, and the end of the year is a great time for that. But I'm happy to announce, uh, I think this group will be the first to know, that we did meet our match for uh, October. 
So that's really great news. And so again, thank you to those of you who contributed to that. Um, it's been a real pleasure to be here. Um, please um, know that you can find me uh, at the national office anytime. I do get a ton of email. So if you don't get an answer to an email, that's not an answer. Feel free to pick up the phone and call. Um, I'm, I'm available uh, to work with you. I'm going to be watching what happens in Colorado, uh, again, as an example to other affiliates. And uh, from the deepest part of my heart, I really appreciate the, the spirit and the camaraderie and the honest conversations that are happening here in Colorado. So thank you for being a, an example for the whole nation. Thank you. No, don't go away. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Now we do have uh, some gifts for you. Uh-oh. Uh, let me see you carry it. Oh, man. All right. Uh, first of all, Mr. President, um, we're worried about you because You've lived in Baltimore so long. You didn't live in Colorado all that long, so your blood didn't get thick enough uh, and to protect yourself against the cold. And I know that in Baltimore, it does get cold, and it's really humid, and it's just a biting, nasty cold. So to protect you and, and your head, which is the most important part of your body, here is a beanie, a Colorado okay. beanie. Okay, yeah, all right. With the, it has 1876 emblazoned on it, which okay. is the year that Colorado became a state. Nice. Now, <clears throat> in order also to keep you warmed up, you have to have a little something to sip on. Um, and here, sir, is some Talnua peated whiskey. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you very Right much. there. And uh, it would, you have, you know, it would be kind of gauche if you drank it straight out of the bottle. Um, although, you know, if you have to, you have to. But here is a glass, a tumbler. Okay. That has Colorado uh, etched into it, the uh, symbol of our state. And uh, every time you use that glass and drink a little Telnua, you can think of us. Okay, thank you. So there you go. Thank and you here's a much. nice little bag for you to. I don't need the bag. Oh, you don't? I'm, lo I'm loaded down with bags. So All right, well, you can, I mean, if you want it, great if you don't. All right. Oh, yes, auction. Um, Marianne, as you're getting ready, I want to do the honor roll call of states. Uh, states. I was say, do you want the honor roll to line up while I do the uh, Well, we're not going to do a lineup. We're just going to ask for people to shout out their pledges because it's going to take too long otherwise. Um, so, where's my list? Well, let's start out with mountains and plains. Renee? $50 for mountains and plains. Thank you. Uh, how about the Denver chapter? Uh, 250. 250. Thank you, Denver. Uh, Marianne, how about Boulder Valley? Hundred dollars. Boulder Valley. JJ Arrigan, Greeley. Fifty. Greeley. Thank you, Greeley. Michelle Tacon, North Metro. She's gone. One hundred dollars from North Metro. We've already turned it in. Thanks. Thank you, Cody Bear, Mile High. 200 mile high, Dan Burke, De well, we did Denver, never mind. Uh, Paul Sandoval, Wild, Wild West. $150 in hand from um, Wild West. Dale Holden in Aurora. All right, 200 to the general fund, $50 to support door prizes. Thank you. Jeanette Fortin, Colorado Springs. One fifty for the affiliate. Uh, the affiliate. <laughs> One fifty for the affiliate, and a hundred for Bell. Thank you very much, Sandy Schleich Pueblo. <laughs> well, nice. That's uh, that's always good. So two hundred from Pueblo, and she wants to raise more. So buy candy bars in the back. All right. Uh, Cindy Coffin, uh, students. 150 general fund. Thank you, Cynthia. 150. Amira Lucas, parents of blind children. All right. Uh, Maureen.
Corrine Neetfeld for the blind parents. 150 Bell, 150 affiliate. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, Sports and Rec, Jody. $200. $200. Thank you, Jody. Uh, Pippi Adams Merchants. All right, Dula Jarbo, Deafline. Okay, well, when you get a treasury, uh, we'll, we'll take some of it. <laughs> Scott, I'm here. It's 450 pledge from the merchants. Wow, 450 pledge. Thank you. Uh, seniors, Duncan. 100 for the affiliate and 50 for Bell. 100 affiliate, 50 Bell. Thank you, seniors. Kevin Worley and the dogs. Oh, Marianne and the dogs. 300 from the guide dog division. All right, to wrap up, our, I want to first of all thank all the chapters and divisions. And I now recognize the chairperson of our auction, Marianne Miliarelli. You had to get that in one last time, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> all righty, we, we have three last items, and we're going to move them quickly. Sorry, moving the mic so I don't have to stand on my tippy toes. <laughs> Um, we have three last items. One of them is, uh, and I'm, I'm sure Maureen or um, one of them will give me a little bit more information because it's not all quite as uh, legible for me as I need, um, is, the, is the Get a Better Body package, which is from the Sports and Rec Division. It is $50 to use at uh, Yoga Body and a set of energy patches to to work on your body and get you better and i believe our value on it looks like if i'm doing the math correctly from last year it's about 130 dollars value all right <laughs> good math thank you maureen um let's start this at 70. and the poor puppy can't bid unless his mommy's willing to pay oh um, if we're not hearing it at 70, can I start it at 50? 50, 50 says Worley. Do I hear more? 50 going once, twice, done. All right. No. All righty. <laughs> Don't know what it is, but you have it. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, this one came to us from Greeley. Originally, Greeley gave us the smaller Broncos Sensi, but now Greeley is giving us the larger Broncos Sensi, which is shaped like the big Broncos football and giving us wax melt to go in with it. It is an $80 value. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, a, it's, a, it's the Broncos, unless you really want that. <laughs> but it's an $80 Sensi set for all the Broncos lovers who, you know, want to have candles in their house, but they don't want to look, you know, girly. <laughs> so um, it's an $80 value. Can I get this started at 40? 40 says Jeanette up front here. Do I hear more than 40? It's a, the, uh, the, oh, the wax bar, she says, is around the campfire, and it smells really nice. 50 says Whirly. Bond, oh, 60 says Whirly. 60 going once. 65 Bonderson. She's a Broncos fan, yo. 65 once. 70. Going once, twice, 80, Marty Rand. Going once, 100, says Whirly. Going once, twice, 110, Marty. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling a smackdown over here. I think we should, we should put them closer. <laughs> I love you, but I'm 
110 going once, twice, gone. All righty. And um, who here wants money? Yeah. Yeah. Who here? Our last auction item is a $100 Visa gift card. You can, you know, um, sp spend your money so you can get money. Um, it's, it's a $100 Visa shopping spree. Use it however you like. It won't run out till it does. <laughs> I like making Whirly laugh. I don't know why, but it's just too good. 20. Scott says 20. 25, Alfonso. Joanne says 30. 35, Alfonso. 40. Alfonso, I, what are you bidding? 35. It's already up to 40. Uh, 45. Who's the 60? Who's, who's the 70? <laughs> Joanne is 70. 80 is Cat Hanks. Last chance for, to do something awesome for the affiliate, guys. 85, Joanne. 90 says cat. Yeah. 90 going once. Going twice. 95, Hacker. 95. Ooh, voice <laughs> from last night. There he is, the Hacker. Um, cat, uh, am I hearing 100 in the back? Okay, 100. Going once. Twice. Gone. <laughs> Catherine Hanks. Now, uh, um, and if you if you give me just a minute, I will bet you the computer meister. Um, and if you guys will indulge me for a moment, please, this auction would not happen, and y'all would not be paying your money if it wasn't for Gary Van Dorn. So please, please help me thank him. I, I don't even know how many years ago I started doing this auction, but I remember asking, hey, could you help me? And he said, whatever the affiliate needs, I'm doing it. And he's been so dedicated for all this time, and I know I could not do this without him. So, what, Maureen? Oh. Okay. Um, what's what's our what's our total? Unaudited. Six thousand eight hundred eighty-six dollars. Six thousand eight hundred eighty-six on the auction, and that on he he said unaudited because he works for the IRS, and we don't have we do not have the total for the heads and tails. I don't know what that is, um, but I know that there was a lot playing. So thank you very much for taking the risk on that first game. And who knows, maybe it'll be, maybe it was good enough, we can do it again. Thank you, uh, Marianne. Um, I want to thank everybody involved in the auction, Gary, of course, and you, Marianne, and all the chapters, divisions that uh, uh, contributed baskets and items and, and what have you. So thank you so much. That's an outstanding auction. Uh, and we are now uh, getting close to the end here. Um, Jessica, if you could come up here. Jessica. All right, get your gavel ready, okay? <laughs> Kevin asked if Jessica has lost it yet. Those of us who love Jessica know that if it weren't for the fact that tendons and muscles and, and a, a skeleton... A uh, skeleton attaches her head to the rest of her body. Perhaps we wouldn't know where her head is. Um, but um, I just want to thank a, a number of people, and I know I'll forget some. But I want to thank Julie Hunter for all of her work now and over the years, and especially with the Braille agendas. Yes. I want to thank neighbor Karen for helping uh, Lisa in so many different ways. Mary Mann helped out a lot this weekend with the uh, registration. 
and of course, we've thanked the Resolutions Committee. We've thanked uh, uh, so many people that make this convention go. And I, as, as the last time as your president, um, I just want to say thank you. I look forward to working with you in my new role. Uh, and I want you to know I love you. And I wish all of you a great Halloween. Uh, we're going to now get into the holiday time, so I hope you have a joyous, peaceful, and healthy holiday with your family and your friends. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to ask... You want a picture? We need a picture. Here. Let's have a picture. All right. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn, and then there will be a second and a vote, and then uh, Jessica and I together will say we stand adjourned, and we'll try and synchronize our gavel uh, pounding. <laughs> Is there a motion? It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, say no. We stand adjourned. going to the game, right?